Saga. Even as four people, including a police officer who was in a rescue mission, have been reported dead following heavy rains, the Met Department has announced that floods may be witnessed in various parts of the country. Director David Gikungu says the rains will continue until early June. It is not just yesterday, I think even on uh, Saturday, if you notice there were rainfall reports in quite a number of places. It's going to continue. We expect a break on that day. And uh, after the break on Friday, we expect some parts to pick up again and to continue. Gikungu has also urged those living in areas likely to be affected by floods to move to safer grounds, further calling on farmers to take advantage of this planting season. I think now it's advisable for, for us to sow what we have. There is sufficient moisture to support growth. As we go into April, the peak month of the season, we expect the rainfall to be sufficient to support growth of crops in most parts of the country. More so given that we are expecting enhanced rainfall. DJ Joe Falmer City Desk Jokey arraigned at the Kibera courts on Monday over the murder of a police inspector will remain in custody for 14 days pending the conclusion of a probe. Mfalme reportedly clashed with a senior police officer last week. The DJ appeared in court alongside three members of his crew and three police officers blamed for the murder. Police applied to hold the suspects for an additional 21 days to conclude a probe on the murder. The court, however, capped the detention period at 14 days. The Kenya Airways has resumed flights from Nairobi to Eldoret after a 10-year break. Speaking during the announcement, Transport Cabinet Secretary Kipchimba Morkuman said the move would ease transport in the North Rift Economic Block. KQ will fly five times a week to Eldoret with fares starting from 8,700. So sports plays a very important role here. But it's not just about sports. This is an agricultural area. Uh, I want to thank the governor for what you are doing and the governors who are doing in the industrial park, working together with national government on value addition in so far as agriculture is concerned, because that's how other investors and business people will be able to come here, again increasing the traffic that is going to use this airport. But even more importantly, we have a very strategic facility in Eldred, which is the Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital. Many people don't know that one of KQ CEO Alan Kilavuka said the resumption of KQ flights in Eldoret marks a relief after the COVID-19 crisis that affected business. Tunasema tumeimprove, unajua tulisema kwamba tuliambiwa Kenya kwamba watupatie muda wakati corona ilitushika. Eh you know shirika la ndege liliumia kidogo. Kwa hivyo ilihitaji ipate muda kidogo ili tupate nafuu kama shirika la ndege. Na tulisema kwamba tuta improve performance yetu kulingana na last year and the previous years na tunaona kesho kwamba tumeimprove hiyo performance. Hatuja and finally, despite the government promising to investigate and take legal action against those suspected of distributing fake fertilizers, some farmers now want the government to as well compensate them for the money they used to buy the subsidized fertilizer. The farmers say the situation may disrupt this year's planting if the National Cereals and Produce Board, that is NCPB, rejects their request. Tulionyesha mbolea vizuri, mbolea safi, lakini kwa sasa ukiangalia zile tumepewa, tumepewa, changarawe, tumepewa manyua. Uniti sasa hii, sindio ni msuri. Alabu ni mbatia sisi, mbolea ni msuri. Sasa kusema, njia na kufusa, sasa takufusake, kama hii mbolea mbae. Kuliko tumisa wa, wa kulima na mna hii, heri turudishia, tubewe mbolea wa sabi, hao turudishia pesa yetu, tunununue kwa maindi. That's the news wire. I'm Lea Ubaga. Ninety seven point six Spice FM Malindi. The following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM. 
you tuned into Kenya's biggest conversation. My name is Ramanya. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so now it's over? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It gets over Can you imagine in 20 minutes. What the big boys have also done. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> When you understand about partnership in politics, it's like the way marriage is these days. When you're looking for a wife, you're like, oh, you know, maybe you can help me pay you for fees as I pay for the rent. Why should you have a lioness living in your bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you a story. I went for a prayer meeting, yeah. which was called for the spouses yes. of candidates yes. for senators and governors. Mm. And when I got to the gate, the lady who was at the security, she refused to, she's telling me, no, no, no. Leo tunataka wa mama. Leo ni wa mama. I'm telling her, no, no, no. She said, no. Sio siku yenu. And I thought, there's a problem here. You know, because if it was a man, I would bet this was a lady. It will be called First Ladies until you change the name. <laughs> the Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. Good morning, and I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. Having come from a Kikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweating coming out because of the passion and whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> behind the noise, there are people, and we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. We used to tell Honda uh, Boraila Molotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kinyati, Sirikali, he is doing conmanship. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax, then you double. In politics, mm. there is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. And I imabo, utaona dunia tu. The Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. Patrick Lodge, Otiano Lumumba, Karibu Sara. Asante Sara. C.T. Muga. C.T. Lodge. Muga. Muga, not Muga. He's here and he has the day's problem. One man marries a woman, another man marries troubles. Is he the same man? Spice. A lion cannot eat more than two dangles. It will die a natural death because there is no ICU in the forest. In Kenya, it has become the situation that you cannot conduct two elections. In fact, the Bukati, uh, you, you can't. I told you about this Indian friend of mine who was uh, enjoying other Indians in the group. He wrote the word valve and told them, read it. <laughs> so how did he say it? I really want to know. The valve. <laughs> <laughs> Kina Edna, it's the like you said the bees are the peas. Kira kitu mukabu mukisi aksema atazama obus. Obus? Mukisema yeye atazama obus. Opposite. Oh, mukisi kiri sana mlei kunasikia obus. The Situation Room. Good morning. It's Tuesday. Not too much of a wet morning, so that means that maybe things are looking a little bit better on these streets. Let's take a look at what's coming off of Fika Superhighway. Not much in terms of traffic. We know that this is going to build up as we get through the morning. There's a little bit of movement, and it's going to all come through towards the Pangani underpass, and that's for now. There's already traffic then spilling over towards Moranga Road, and Juja Road is already looking pretty busy. It is probably going to end up in a gridlock at some point. Landy's Road, even before you say Bob's your uncle, there's traffic here already getting through towards Kamkunji at the roundabout that is already busy let's take a look at the eastern bypass because it looked as though it might get busy and yes indeed there it is there's movement coming in inbound and then we'll probably see uh, a little bit more of that as you get towards um, the Alterian junction all right so we're gonna keep an eye on all of this as we get into Tuesday let's see what's happening on the western side real quick on Waiaki way not much actually you'll get through towards the uh, central Westlands area without too much of a hitch. Let's keep an eye on things and see what happens as we get into traffic hour this Tuesday. We'll talk on Spice of MKE on X hashtag, The Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, 
controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room, the only way it's, to start your day. Huh? It's not Thursday. <laughs> nice try. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Where are you? Can you come back to where the rest of us are? It's Tuesday. Come back to where we are. I come back down. Give me chess war. Give me another chance. Try. <laughs> it's a try. <laughs> it's a try. And uh, and do what? I'll keep you satisfied. Bas. Sendo. Bas. Do, 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 do. Listen to the words of that song. Who? You. Me. I listen to the words of the song. Mm. I've listened now. Mm. And then do what? <laughs> you just listen to the words of the song. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, I've refused. I'm not listening to the words of that song. <laughs> nope. Uh, no. How are you, though? I'm fine, thank you. Good morning. Very good morning to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did it rain in your neck of the woods? It did. Last night? There was a bit of a drizzle. It needed to because it was hot. Mm. Yeah. And I don't do hot. Well, in some circumstances. Okay. Others I normally do. Uh -huh. but, uh, yeah, you get what I'm saying. I get what you're saying. Mm. I don't know whether it rained in my neck of the woods. Were you too asleep? Yeah, but I don't think it did. Uh, no, it, actually it didn't. Mm. It, it did not rain. It did, did not not it did rain. not rain <laughs> did not rain yesterday good morning everybody how are you doing welcome to kenya's biggest conversation it's eric and ndu city a corner one two one two so i'm gonna for you one two one two then he'll be here tomorrow mm. go welling yes uh, so let me tell you what we shall be discussing anyway anyway dr magari kenya do you know him if you do not know dr magari kenya please no, he Please didn't. know him. He's a doctor. He's based in Nakuru. And he is one man who is taking public interest litigation to another level in this season. Currently, for example, after the president signed the Affordable Housing Act, Gekeri Gekenyi went to court and he said, no, I'm challenging this law. And he has several other cases that he has taken to court on several other matters. So he'll be joining us again at 7 a.m. today to talk about some of these cases and, uh, and why he's raising issues with uh, many of them. And then at uh, 8 a.m. and 9 a.m., we are going to have the Kenya Revenue Authority. So KRA told us in September last year, we are going to roll out something called E-Teams, mm. the Electronics Tax Invoice Management system and they said everybody get onto e teams e you e chai kwa mandas kwa kiosk unapewa e teams okay kama upewa e teams usilipe usilipe unanunua avocado kwa soko e teams ni ningine unanunua nyanya e teams all those things and then they said the uh, deadline is what? End of December. End of December. The end of December came. Even they did not know that it's end of December. December. Like, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, we had said. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Let's okay. do this. No, let's do this in March. End of March. End of March. Yeah. End of March. When is end of March now? End of March is Sunday. Bus. End of March is coming. And they say by end of March, Kenya Revenue Authority, everybody should be on E teams. Now we've seen the conversations. The Deputy President was hosting Avocado Farmers the other day and they were like, where? Excuse. Excuse, Mr. Depute. <laughs> he kitu. We know, uh, I was. Uh, so there are questions here and there on how the rollout of the E teams is, is happening. The manager in charge of E teams at KRA will be with us at 8 a.m. She will be answering questions and we'll open up the phone lines plus 
all other platforms so you can raise your concerns especially last week we saw some big thing so it was tax um, in vat season 20th mm. like it happens every month mm. uh, you have issued an e-teams invoice um, you are reconciling so that you can now go and file your your vat returns yeah huh Shokaru <laughs> on you why you make what <laughs> why so the chief manager for e-teams at kra is hakamba wangwe she will be joining us at 8 a.m get your questions ready and all your concerns is the live stream up yes it is it is eh? yes it is so we can do like that yes we can okay now that city is not here mm. we don't have a proverb today <gasps> so now what happens who knows man we shall figure it out okay <laughs> it's 16 minutes after six good morning Cloudy conditions in Nairobi, 17 degrees, highs of 27 and lows of 16. And it's clear at 17 in Nakuru, going to highs of 27 and lows of 17. 18 and cloudy in Nyeri with highs of 26. We'll see lows of 17 while in Eldoret. It's clear for now at 15 with highs of 26 and lows of 14. It's mostly clear in Mombasa at 27. We'll see highs of 33. While in Malindi, we'll see highs of 34 where it's mostly clear at 27. Kizum is partly cloudy at 21 with highs of 30 while in Kakamega at 19 is partly cloudy with highs of 30 we'll see lows of 18. Clear conditions at 19 in Kampala with highs of 28 while Dar es Salaam is clear at 25 we'll see highs of 33. It's 14 and cloudy in Johannesburg going to highs of 23 while at 27 Mogadishu is clear with highs of 34. It's 14 and mostly cloudy in Addis Ababa with highs of 22 while Lagos is clear at 27 it'll go to highs of 33. 24 and mostly clear in Kinshasa with highs of 34 and we're looking into a sunny Beijing Tuesday afternoon at 11 with highs of 19. It's 9 degrees and raining in Paris with highs of 12 and lows of 6 while cloudy conditions in London at 8 degrees will see highs of 13 and lows of 6. Monday night in New York is 5 degrees and clear. Coming into Tuesday with a chance of thunderstorms we'll see highs of 12 and lows of 2. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice hey, FM, Nairobi. Oh, just wakes up and says, Sour too. <laughs> okay. <Hey>. Why? <laughs> What's Evo going two. on? Wagwan. Ayay. Ni, ni, ni. Hi, hi. Tell us. Mm -hmm. Robert, uh, Rogers Nyange says, Good morning. Tuned in from Sagala Taita. Hey, Sagala. Just for Moirori says, Good morning. When spice roars, you know the day is already spiced to a height of greatness. Good day, my people. Well, good morning to you. Robert is tuned in from Mombasa and says, Good morning. Kelvin Kaburu says, Good morning. Tuned in from Kahawa Sukari. I always wonder, why is it called Kahawa Sukari? Tijui. Kuna Kahawa Ngapi? <laughs> what? Sukari is sugar, mm. isn't it? Mm. Okay. okay. I don't know why actually. This Kahawa Sukari, Kahawa Wendani, and yeah. Kahawa West. Hmm. Okay. Kahawa is coffee. Yes, sure. There are three coffees. Yeah. Yeah, you need three coffees to get through the day. Okay. Just Probably it was a one big ranch, mm -hmm. and then now, depending on who had bought it, yeah, the then groups, they split it. The, the, the groups that came and bought it, maybe there was a group called the Wendani Group. And then they bought a chunk of the cow in Dani area. And that group called themselves Sukari. <laughs> <laughs> and they bought the Sukari part of the ranch. And then the others were West. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was West. It could have been. <laughs> Who knows? Kawa waste. Kawa waste. <laughs> <laughs> You're silly, but okay. <laughs> Even Zintabo says, good morning, everybody. Please invite the CS. Tell us what's happening regarding the, D the doctor strike. Well, the Director General of Health will be joining us tomorrow, actually. Mm. Eh, okay. Mm. We will wait. We will. And see. Yes. Sawa, sawa. Yes. John Wangi says, Salam alaikum, guys. Well, alaikum salam, my dear. Joseph Makua says, Good morning, tuned in from Merrill, Marsabit County. Good morning, big team, tuned in from NJPA, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, driving home while listening. That's Mogere Kinara. Onganyi Malala says, Good morning, everybody. Ndu, CT, Eric, Edna, Yego, tuned in as usual. 
invite the CS for agriculture to, to shed more light on fertilizer. Kwanza hiyo. Hey, where? Hey. Fake fertilizer. I don't know. Fertilizer <coughs> that grows beans instead of maize is crazy. Mm. That's a good idea, actually. Jimmy Munuthi says, good morning. Um, morning walk made easy by listening to Spice FM. Good morning to you, Karibu Sana. Joseph and Derry is tuned in this Tuesday, waiting for CT's proverb. Today will be Eric's proverb. Rural Karaoke is tuned in from Canada, London, Ontario specifically. Hey, so many people online this morning. KK, John Muga is tuned in from Washington State and says, Jamboni. Jumbo Jumbo. When are we going to have affordable housing? <laughs> okay, Sour. It's happening. Can't you afford it? Really? Mm -hmm. Ken Corriere says, Hamjambo, looking forward to a day. Wale wana soma habari zura zao zitaonekana. Ha? Kama kina leo, lea. Or what? Did I get it wrong? Sijuwe na sama nini mimi uyo mutu. Uyo mutu. Moving along swiftly. Hilary Chariot says, good morning from Molo. Good morning, people. Please, would you bring the ISPAC chair at Siamo? Uh, Patrick Waishigo says, good morning, Spice and all Kenyans. Um, we see you. And also, big up to your son, Kaden. Samuel Muravi is tuned in from Nkoroi. Ngotarangai. I've been there. Jurist Tiriwa says, good morning, Waku. Sir George Gashoiri is tuned in listening. Evans Langat is also tuned in. Hey, Meshak Jenga is tuned in from Canada. Mm. Rose Grace is tuned in from Tamu. Mm. Margaret Wanjohi this morning is tuned in from Texas. Dante is tuned in from Q8 to Salmia. Joseph Ondigi says, good morning, Kisi Ningwe. Nelson from Peterborough says, hi, Spice team. And the common fox, the heat is up in the Seychelles, ready to spice up the morning with Spice FM. Washo Gatoto, tuned in, says, Has, have a blessed day. Live from Kibwezi. You guys are great. Well, thank you, sir. Um, <laughs> Mako Jolo says, good morning. Nyalech here from Nyakach, the land of upright men. Okay, I have a uh, question. Where? Upright as in you are standing upright. <laughs> or <laughs> upright homo upright sapiens. Homo sapiens. Yeah. Abi, which one is it? <laughs> you shall tell us. Patrick Ficarini is tuned in. Our folks on Facebook, we do not leave you out. Tula Edwin says, good morning, Spices. Uh, Bashir says, good morning, Spice. Waiting for the KRA official to answer our questions. Bonjour, bonjour. Bonjour. Says Collins Kiptai. Sorry, Kimtai Kipsat, Karibu Sana. Thanks for joining us. Collins guys. Kimtai Kipsat, Kipsat. Eugenia. Hmm? Eugenia Eco Top. Senior. Senior. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, City. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Do like that. <laughs> Do like that. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Our proverbs for the whole of this week are from the Island Republic of Mauritius. Mauritius. Well done. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Whose capital city is? Who knows, man? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> Port Louis. That one. Okay. Ah, yeah. And the president is? Ah. Must be one of those. Thank you, long Mr. Names. DJ. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> huh? that, no, that was Madagascar. That was Madagascar. Yeah. With Antananarivo. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. The proverb for today when the head is too big, it cannot dodge blows. Hmm. <laughs> When the head is too big, it cannot do what? Dodge blows. Mm. I agree. Yep. It will catch the blows. Headlines? Headlines in the standard <laughs> this morning. Mm. <laughs> Gashagwa walks back on Kenyatta's attacks. And I quote, I'm sorry. Deputy President tells former First Family for his for his incessant attacks on them and their enterprises as politics in Mount Kenya hots up. So let me read that again. He basically says, I'm sorry. Even as these things are happening, he's saying he's sorry. I tender our apologies to Mama Ngina and ask her to forgive us like her children. It was political bad manners and it shall never happen again. Ah. Where, where? Okay, make of that what you will. Mm. We continue looking at other headlines. DJ, police face murder over officers killing... Celebrity DJ Mfalme and police officers were yesterday arraigned with the DPP saying they will take a murder plea after a man they allegedly fought with died. This was a shock. Tanina remembered for her work ethics, friends and families paid tribute to journalists many said had a character that should be aped by many during the Requiem Mass. That was sad. Yeah. 
High Court throws out Jerry's 17 billion shilling diesel case. Well, surprise, surprise. Taxpayers' pain as state drags its feet. Which pain exactly? We'll look at that. Mm -hmm. Workers at Lamington Chalby Drive removed debris from a house that was flooded following heavy rains on Sunday night. Dagareti MP Beatrice Elachi blamed the Nairobi County government <laughs> mm. for giving approval to buildings near or on riparian lands. This is not going to be funny in the next couple of days. If the rain continues in the manner in which it came down on Sunday and the manner in which the meteorological department is telling us it will in the month of April, oy, oy, we are going to have many, many more oy, things like this happening. Oy, oy, it is not going to be pretty. Just a warning, but that's what it's going to be. This is Chalby Drive. Yes. In Lovington. Yes. Andrew Franklin, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Well, 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 well. yeah. Well, well, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's okay. not. It's not pretty at all. It's. You want to start with that story, or which one do you want to start with? I can start with that story. Actually, uh. it's carried on page. T uh, am I lying? No, I'm not lying. Now, mm. City Hall blamed. After rains caused destruction, heavy rains pounded Nairobi Sunday night, leaving a trail of destruction. Roads were blocked, houses submerged in water, and many businesses interrupted. Transport was yesterday morning temporarily affected on the Nairobi Expressway and Enterprise Road due to floods. So Enterprise Road was the lake basin. You know, there's no road in, on Enterprise. There's right? no road. Let's just say Enterprise is an idea of a road it's not a road enterprise it's zone not, thank you <laughs> it's not a road i don't know what's it's masquerading this thing has as been a going on for way. over 10 years 15 15 years enterprise road has not been completed in 15 years right now there are some huge boulders in the middle of the road and they're trying to divert you going what you never know which way you're going if you're coming in this direction towards mombasa road you have to cross over to the other side take the wrong lane to then be able to make the turn and uh, then find your way to road c a b whatever and we have a kenya urban roads authority there's a sign of <laughs> kura on site kura on site right oh, there god there's a sign it's ridiculous. Hi. It's ridiculous. And there have been trucks parked there for donkey years, yonks. It's just madness. So now imagine all those gullies yesterday. It was and you know, ridiculous. When they started the construction of that road, it's because money had been allocated for this road. Yes. Okay? Mm. It came in, whether it came through the, the, the road maintenance levy or it was a budgetary allocation, whatever. But the Kenya Roads Board put it there as one of the projects mm. to be implemented by the Kenya Urban Roads Authority. Mm -hmm. Kenya Urban Roads Authority goes into procurement yeah. and awards a contract mm. and says start because they have money, money. And there's contractor on? 15 years. Yeah. And right now, uh, um, before Christmas, there were some trucks. They came and pretended to do something, you know, dug up, dug up, dug up. As they dug up, they now left. One truck was even parked on the road permanently. If you used Enterprise Road for maybe... The month of December, uh, that yellow excavator was just like parked stuck in, in the, the middle, middle of the road. Tough to endure. Not Fly. moving, nobody. Do what you need to do to get where you're going. Kim, Kenya. Let me tell you more about this okay, because now continue. it is raining. Yes. A police officer <laughs> identified. Now motorists were trapped in traffic jams on Lunga Lunga Road, Peponi Road, Baricha Road, and Jogo Road, among others. A police officer identified as David Chesiri lost his life while trying to save lives at least of at least four people in Kamkunji. Oh, no. Yeah, that oh, was yesterday no. morning. Other affected areas are Kangemi, Mukuru Waruben, and Mukuru Wanjenga, Kware, Viwandani, Kayole, and Njiru. Along Chalbi Drive in Lavington, residents were marooned in their homes as flood water poured in, causing significant damage. Dagoretti North MP Beatrice Elachi, who visited the area, blamed illegal buildings constructed along riparian land. Now, you might think that this is just something that she may have been saying because she didn't have anything to say, but picture this. Riparian land means that what it offers in some cases is it's either a road reserve or that it offers an off flow for things like rainwater. Mm. So if you go and build, there is nowhere for this water to go. Yep. So you essentially are building a dam. You've yep. created a dam right in the middle of where there's habitation yep so if it should rain there's no way for the water to pass through the off flows that were naturally there have been constructed on so people basically are flooded in so there's a hundred percent sense in what she's saying
She says there is a neighbor who was given approval to build concrete on top of a whole line that carries water from the other side to the river. You cannot control water. It is natural. Mother Nature will fight back. If you block it, it will find its own way. And that's what happened last night. The floods also hit um, Karatasi Products Limited in industrial area, causing losses. Vincent Mbalu, the company manager, blamed individuals who were encroaching on riparian land along the Ngong River. He accused the Nairobi City Council of failure to keep waterways clear despite having raised concerns with the authorities. He said there are individuals who have tried to reclaim land from the river. The soil and whatever they have put on the riverbank is also blocking the water from having a free way to pass. We have a Nairobi River Commission or something like that. There's something like that. Right? There is, yes. Um, and the county government of Nairobi... Mm. Is the one that gives all these approvals. Yes. And is the one that is in charge of enforcement. Yes. But they simply are unable to enforce. Or unwilling. Decide which one it is. Unwilling or unable. Take your pick. <sighs> this is just, it is, you know. What value do you place? I keep asking that question. What value? Where are your priorities? How much more destruction do you need to see in order for you to do the right thing? How much? How much? What's enough? What's the scale? 1 to 10? 1 to 100? Where are we? 80? 99? What is it? What's needed? What really pains me is when we put this ones in the story. Mm. Areas affected. Kangemi, mm. Mukuru kwa Ruben, Mukuru kwa Njenga, Kware, Viwandani, Kayole, mm. Jiro. Mm. The extent of the devastation in those areas because there's no road there's there's nothing there's no drainage there's nothing, there's nothing. you will find there is nothing and then and those are the areas i tell you the where children sleep standing up yes because it's raining in their house and the water is flowing into, into their, their house. house. So there's water everywhere. And adjacent to up. their house is huge heaps of garbage, yep. for example, that has never been removed. So if anything, that water is being encouraged to come inside because yep. there's no way for it to flow out. And then they become a statistic. They become a list. Yeah. They become part of a list. And we come here and we say, okay, these are the areas that are affected. One, two, three, four, five. The people in this area just don't know. We're looking at a whole month of April. They just do not know what they're going to do. Oh, my God. The children in these areas cannot play anymore. They can't play outside. They can't play inside. They don't have a school to go to. <laughs> have you tried sleeping standing up? <laughs> and then there's water on your feet, eh. up to your knees. Eh. You can't even sleep because you don't know whether the roof is going to cave in on you. It's, this is a very, very, very... Anyway... I Next. agree with Beatrice Ilachi here. Mm. This one I agree. It's City Hall. Yes, yes. There's a failure here. Yeah. 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 Let's take a break. 27 minutes to 7. Let's see what's happening on the road this morning. All right, Landy's Road had already packed up at 6 o'clock this morning. Let's take a look at what it looks like now. Um, there's still uh, quite some hold up as you then get to the Kamkunji roundabout. Looks like it's going to continue for some time. It's heavy on the thicker superhighway. Coming in uh, heavy from Kasarani. Uh, it's starting to build up as you get through towards Garden City. Uh, but after that is where we see the hold up all the way from Survey through beyond the um, Pangani underpass. And also coming in from Kiambu Road as you then approach Muthaiga Square. That is very very busy coming off Waiakue for now fingers crossed you're all right um a little bit on Rilo Dingaway coming round the side from Timor um but this we should be able to handle at least for now uh, North Airport Road coming in from Cabanas going towards Altering is starting to do the business and we're seeing traffic on Manyanja Road trying to cross over towards Jogo Road so all of this is just starting this morning it's a bit drier than it was yesterday so let's see what happens today but please still be careful let's see what happens um, through the morning before we get into traffic our proper we'll talk on spice fmk eon x hashtag the situation room mature intelligent talk every morning spice up yourself mornings done right 
94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. About something that's going on in Mombasa. But before that, mm. uh, no, I was looking for the screenshots of the other headlines. So our papers had did their thing today. Yeah. Ah, surely me, Maxet. Anyway, so remember the lady who went and said, Mimi, I am big importer of Mafuta. Mm. Mimi, speak to Russian, tell Russian there is Bring business fuel. in Kenya, bring fuel in Kenya. And Russian says, money here, fuel there, bring, take Kenya. <laughs> <coughs> then she says, fuel arrives here, pipeline gives it to Galana. Mm. And now she was complaining. When she went to complain that DCI, DCI uh, kidnapped her. And she's like, for from some like 48 hours yeah. or something, no windows. Surely, blah, blah, blah. what yeah. is this thing? Mm. That lady is called Anjeri. A case went to court in Mombasa. The Admiralty Court in Mombasa has dismissed the 17 billion shilling uh, diesel claim by businesswoman Anjeri against Kenya Pipeline for failing to prove that the fuel she's talking about ever arrived in Kenya. <laughs> Justice Kizito Magare said diesel consignment EN590 never arrived and was not aboard motor tanker Haigui and the cargo the claimant and defenders were fighting over was not the same. Last year, Jerry hit the headlines after she was allegedly abducted by security officers at DCI over the importation of the 17 billion shillings diesel. Galana Energies Limited and Aramco Trading Fujaira had laid claim to the 100,000 metric tons of the said diesel. Jerry filed a case at Mombasa High Court on October 8th last year and successfully stopped pipeline and the KPA from offloading the diesel from the ship. Just as Kizito issued a warrant of arrest against the vessel, barring it from leaving the port, and also stopped the discharging and offloading of the said oil. Now, he says, after informing myself of the facts, I am of the considered view that there is nothing to go on trial. Diesel EN590 never arrived and was not aboard the motor tanker Haigui. This is a proper case to strike out. It cannot be saved by amendment or otherwise. This one, he manda. For that, Jerry will incur a 21,700 no, 21.7 million shilling cost towards striking KPA name out of the suit and a further 22.4 million to Galana. You come on, Mishika. She will incur 21,780,000 shillings costs. Why? For striking KPA name out of the suit. She will also incur 22,440,000. Thousand to Galana. I dismiss the claimant's application okay, okay. and discharge all orders issued on the said date. KPA name is struck out with a cost of 165,000 US dollars. Yeah. The entire suit is struck out with a cost of 170,000 US dollars to Galana Energies Limited. For avoidance of doubt, the application by the claimant is dismissed and the order issued on November 8th is hereby discharged. That was the order to impound the ship. Okay. He said since the material or cargo they were fighting over was not the same, they should file their case in Jeddah, where they may have misled, been misled or otherwise initiated the scheme to steal the oil. <laughs> the diesel never arrived into the country. The goods purchased by Galana Energies Limited are different from the purported ones by the claimant. The master of the ship is king in this matter. He knew what he was carrying. He signed the documentation. This case reminds me of words of Shylock. In the play by William Shakespeare in Merchant of Venice. Venice. At Act Scene 3, in this case, a ship motor tanker Haigui turned up and left behind a web of truths, ties, half truths, subterfuge, and machinations that were of proportions unknown in the recent world. Not even the legendary Al Capone and others could have pulled stunts some of the parties were putting. It was not clear even whether this was a motor vessel or a motor tanker he said <coughs> he was like yani hii kitu nimeletwa hapa hata jaba haiwezi fika story kama hii hata kwa jaba you cannot bring <laughs> such a story like to like ah, you can't leave us alone <laughs> you can't he he si juu mtoto wapi i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you, we just, we just, we just do this, eh? Uh, so you go to Jeddah. go to Jeddah mm -hmm. and maybe file your case. Maybe there. they will hear you. Yeah, maybe maybe 
your story there can have some legs. But here, here, <laughs> uh, here it can be. Eh? Another court case. Okay. But now let me tell you. Okay. State to press murder charges against DJ over officers killing. Okay, so this was bizarre, but it happened. Let's tell you, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Benson Ingonga, yesterday reveals that the state intends to press murder charges against disc jockey Joe Mfame. During the hearing for an application to detain DJ Mfame, whose real name is Joseph Mwendwa Monuro, um, Ingonga, through prosecutor lawyer um, Lawrence Mutune, said the investigation will determine whether the DJ and six co-accused were responsible for the death of Dagoretti Deputy Sub-County Criminal Investigations Officer Felix Kellyan Kintosi. Mfame's employees, Alan Ocheng, Eric Karaoke Gathua, and Simon Wambugo Wanjiro, together with Kikuyu Police Station-based officers Khadija Abdiwako, Sabdi Chariot, Sami Chariot, uh, Rutich, and Agnes Kerubo Mugoi, appeared before Kibira Magistrate Margaret Murage. Mutune told the magistrates that investigators need 21 days to detain the seven since the probe was complex. I know you have reservations about that. I'll, I'll, allow, you, I'll allow you in a minute to BS. diffuse. The, head, the lead investigator, Frederick um, Cosson, told the court that Kellyan's death was reported by his brother, Reinhard Kintosi. Kellyan was involved in a slight accident while driving along Kikuyu Road opposite Kikuyu Police Station. Okay. Mm -hmm. After the accident, there was an altercation where Kellyan was allegedly beat up by the DJ and his employees. Wako, a traffic officer based at Kikuyu Police Station, visited the scene and found Kellyan being beaten. Mm -hmm. Kellyan was taken to Nairobi West Hospital on March 16th, where he was admitted with lower abdominal pains, and then he died on March 21st. Mm -hmm. The two, the other two police officers arrested were Sami Chariot, Rotich, and Agnes Kerubo Mugoi, who were desk reporting officers at Kikuyu Police Station on the day the victim was reported to have been beaten. Mm -hmm. So they, it's all now. This is what the investigation officer is saying. Yeah. So, 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 so there's an accident. Yes. And so there's an alleged altercation between the two people involved in the accident, in the, accident. the two parties involved. Yes. So there's this. Um, DCI officer mm -hmm. and then there's the DJ and his people and then a police officer comes and finds that these people are being beaten one person is being yeah beaten. this one person is being beaten mm. but now we have taken into custody the police officers who are recording statements at the police station yeah remember this happened along the police station right Kikuyu Road the police station is adjacent but these guys are at the desk yes they're inside now so what we are not being told at uh. this moment is what occurred between the accident having been having taken place the alleged beating that was taking place on the road and then when people left road and proceeded to police station and what happened there was this man taken into the police station after having been beaten what happened did they take him directly to hospital who recorded the statement at their desk was there a beating who recorded the statement at the desk and what exactly were they recording what was being reported what did they here? write what were they writing yeah who was beaten <clears throat> who was brought to the police station there's already holes in this and you don't even know what this is a very I mean. clear case ndu mm? i mean for cops who do investigations on a daily basis is a very clear case mm. What was the situation? So you wrote, you reported this and the other. Okay, at what point was this person released? Did they take themselves to Nairobi West Hospital? Who took them to Nairobi Hospital? Yeah. How did they end up in Nairobi West Hospital? I mean, at 21 days, hold people in custody. Because it's complex. Bra Let me tell you something hell. else. Bra I also intend hell. to take the accused to Mama Lucy Hospital for mental assessment and for the investigation file to the Director of Public Prosecutions for determination of appropriate charge to be preferred against him. This is police attempting to do a cover-up on a case. Do you remember a couple of weeks ago, yeah. the case of the gentleman who was taken <clears throat> from Nairobi West and <clears throat> then found somewhere a couple of days yep. later yep. in Lukenia? Mm. It didn't take 48 hours for police to connect the dots, trail it here, 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 find out, let's go. They yeah. were sure of what they were doing. Here, it's clear that we are shooting in the dark. Uh.
mpaka we need to make some mental assessment they, that's why i need 21 days this is such such bs and we don't know what happened why would why do magistrates and judges allow this nonsense from police officers i want to hold them for 21 days ask why for what what it is that you would like so, what so okay like so so how did you get to arrest these people mm. we summoned them to come to the police station and we arrested them so you summoned them and they came yeah and they've been in police custody since then yes so why do you need 21 days with them in custody are you hoping that they're going to poop the evidence what is it they'll admit to it admit to what what exactly are you looking for because even if they admitted they could admit from wherever they are and come and record a statement yep. unless you're saying that there's something they have ingested that is evidence <laughs> and you're waiting for them to Release poop it. it so then you can see <laughs> this is what we're waiting for yes and we needed them to be here in order for that to happen why do you need to keep people in police custody for 21 days and i keep bitching about this dj john found me i know this guy mm. this guy violence on this guy mm. mm. i cannot say that i know what happened the circumstances of this particular incident on this day but i'm looking at him and thinking good huh? gracious god so How? okay so you have a case to take against john Falmer. you have an investigation mm. it's okay it's okay must somebody spend 21 days i imagine any of us Indu, can be involved in something like this Anything and the next thing happen. a cop is saying is i need to hold you for 21 days can you imagine you looking no. think about your children no i can't i and now suddenly mm. you are in police custody for 21 days the entire neighborhoods we need what on no earth way. is all this nonsense about mm -mm. and you can't run away from the element this is very important here the person the victim here who passed is a police officer yep you can't remove you cannot remove the importance or weight of that particular piece of information so what are we looking at here that a police officer was beaten and killed yep. and so we must make something stick and it must stick really fast yeah and it cannot be police officers who are involved <clears throat> this it doesn't look good here. Uh, no, 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 no. I no. would be interested to know what they actually do come up with. Yesterday was day one mm. um, after arraignment in court. Now 21 days for them to... <laughs> and I hope, because thing... that thing you're talking about, 21 days will come and go. If they don't find anything, they will release with an apology, if that. There's no apology. There's no apology. We'll they will just release as they carry on. Yeah, the DPP who has gone to court to say I intend to file murder charges against all these people has not even received any file. These are police basically saying we'd like to hold some. We are in the middle of an investigation. We'd like to hold someone. Mm. Why are you detaining someone for 21 days? What's the magic of 20? Why not 23? Why not Why 15? Not 19? Why not four? Why not two? Mm. Why? Why is it that every time police are going to to, to court, they're asking for 21 days? Yeah, it doesn't look good. Our DP, regarding Gashagua, is yeah. seeking forgiveness from Kenya's first lady, former, believe. first, first, his Kenya's I... first, first lady, <laughs> Mama Gena Kenyatta, <laughs> of a political transgressions okay. against her family Rashagwa says he regrets the words that the kenya Kwanza administration leaders hurled at mamangena and her family vowing to never allow that to happen again speaking on kameme tv and radio stations yesterday Rashagwa said mamangena by virtue of her age and status is a mother to the politicians insulted her <laughs> during the campaign period okay. i tender our apologies to mamangena mm. and i ask her to forgive us just like her children it was political bad manners. It shall never happen again. Okay. We lacked respect for her. It's regrettable. 24th of April last year, in one of his tirades against the former first lady, Rashagua himself, challenged her to divide half of the Kenyatta family land and share it with the children of Mau Mau, who he claimed was quarters. This was after Mamangena met freedom fighter, the late Mudoni Kirema Field Marshal. I was so happy yesterday to see people saying that they are thinking of how to help the Mau Mau, even if they have never helped them since 1963. It's still not late because Mau Mau and their descendants are suffering. He said, all we are asking is for them to help the Mau Mau in a meaningful way. 
or the land they took from the Mau Mau, let them return to at least half of the parcels of land to the Mau Mau and their children, including myself. <laughs> did he say that or wait did yes. he just add it yeah no no he said it you know he has always said he's the son of Momo okay okay I've seen it actually so he said <laughs> Mashamba. <laughs> now yesterday while offering himself to revert the river back to its cause Gashagwa said he was aware that such campaign excesses were, where mothers are demonized was against Kikuyu culture and it would not attract blessings, but a curse. He said he's in the process of changing the region's political discourse. Mm. In a sudden change of tune, he hailed former President Uhuru Kenyatta, referring to him as our son wow. and President Uhuru for his contributions to the country's development agenda. Okay. And this clause that he had declared directed all Mount Kenya leaders to stop attacking Uhuru and his family. <laughs> former President Uhuru Kenyatta is our son. Mm. We worked together. Mm for 17 years and we only disagreed for two years okay now that's the past mm. i pray for him in his retirement mm. or who is one of us we are reaching out to everyone okay <laughs> you know what <laughs> i never expected it <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. But you know what? Kudos to the man. I have to say, look, I think that you, you eat humble pie and you mm. apologize. However, yes. you cannot run away mm. from the possibility of a political play here. Yeah. You cannot divide the two. The fact that he chose <laughs> to actually give an interview to yeah. Kameme TV and Kameme FM. Yes. And he said and these he words. Said this there. Uh, uh, my friend. In as much as an apology in all its humility is welcome. Yeah. You know, it, it looks good. Of course. It does a lot for you in terms of sanitization mm. of your political outfit. Mm. Fantastic. How, and even maybe you as an individual and things you may have uttered before, mm -hmm. it does great things for you. Welcoming a mother, welcoming a brother, our son, etc., etc. However, we cannot but read, you know, <laughs> politics into this. It has a political sway. Mm. You can't walk away from it. Mm. You never know what's coming up in the future. And he's laid the ground. He's told you, after all, we buried the hatchet. Yeah, we've smoothened the ground. Are, now let's start again. No, we are same people. Yeah. We are children of the same mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so life sentences life sentence mm. or even and there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of chatter mm. after the last uh, big case that we saw when the death sentence was handed down and there's a lot of been there's been a lot of judicial chatter like should this have been the case why do we do that has it not been abolished etc etc mm. now another judge has joined judicial voices calling against life jail sentences mm. this is different of course but it's just that now there's a lot of discourse around what should we or should we not do high court judge nixon sifuna has joined judicial voices seeking a change in sentencing persons to indefinite jail terms professor sifuna in his judgment in an incest case argues that life sentence is unconstitutional for being unclear when one should leave mm -hmm. for life for life we jail you for life until you die what exactly are we trying to say court of appeal judges pauline yamwea jesse lesit and george odunga justice sifuna has also ruled that life sentence is equal to death sentence as freedom is guaranteed only by dying according to sifuna the purpose of a sentence cannot be achieved as one may enter one may either die a day after sentencing mm. or live until late in their life. Mm. Sifuna is of the view that it is impossible to complete a life sentence unless death interrupts it. The death sentence and a life sentence are the two sides of the same coin in terms of their severity and permanence, save that one is a terminal one while the other is not. One of the most common denominators in the two is that one sentence, the convict is permanently deleted from society and will never return to it, mm. except through perhaps a stealthily escape or daring dash in a prison break, <laughs> such as happened recently in Haiti, uh -huh. which action is criminalized and is a punishable offense. In the case, Sifuna ordered a man codenamed JNN to serve 10 years in jail. The man was accused of defiling his 10-year-old daughter in Moranga in 2017 and was sentenced to life. Aggrieved, JNN filed an appeal challenging the conviction and the sentence. Now, Sifuna is not a lone voice in the growing number of judicial calls for change in the penal code. It is the fourth time that the court is finding that life sentence is unconstitutional mm. and lacks dignity. 
The first <clears throat> case to call for change on how courts were sentencing capital offenders and those convicted of defilement was by judges Nyamwea, Lesit and Odunga. The three agreed that it is unfair to outlaw mandatory death sentences only to order a person to remain behind bars until they die. For them, they are saying, it's one and the same thing. If we're saying that the death sentence has, has been outlawed, we cannot then say you will live in jail for the rest of your life. So death and life... Death sentence, sentence and if, life imprisonment. If death sentence is wrong, so is life, life imprisonment, imprisonment. Is what they're saying. Oh, nice. I like this judicial activism. Do you like it? I like it. Mm. I like it. So, yes, the Supreme Court already told us mm. death sentence... Uh -uh. Uh, now there's a new argument, actually. Mm, it is. It actually is. And now when you think about it... So basically, what the judge has reduced this is to the mandatory minimum. The mandatory minimum for years. defilement, 10 years. Ten so I've given you the mandatory minimum, 10. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What? So according to them, the purpose of jailing a person is either to deter, rehabilitate, denounce, or retribute for the offense committed. Yes. You should be there to learn your lesson. Yes. So that you can come back into society and one would hope, pray, cross, that you will that never do this and again. And now you shall live your yeah. life properly. Now they're saying that a life sentence should not mean the natural life of a prisoner. It should be. It should be. We are equally guided by this holding by the Supreme Court of Kenya. And in that instant appeal, we are of the view that having found the sentence of life imprisonment to be unconstitutional, mm. we have the discretion to interfere with the said sentence. So that that sentence should be in the time which has been deemed the minimal time whereby you can reform, be deterred. Um, denounce or retribute for the offense committed and 10 years according to them can make sense yeah actually life sentence like a life sentence is like a death sentence mm. because basically you're saying you're staying there you will never and be back you in are a cost to society for the rest of your life we're paying to keep you. we're paying to keep you and we don't know whether you're reforming we need you to come back and, and let's show us contribute. that you're reforming Really? It's going to be interesting. I can already hear the backlash and I can hear it in high, high decibels. Who would be throwing a backlash against life sentence? The folks who feel aggrieved by what this individual has done. Okay. And they'd be wanting? A lie, an eye for an eye. A tooth so for death. a tooth. Yeah. Imagine if you defile my 10-year-old daughter... Of course, who will the never be the same. Is, and this is the backlash, Eric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you, if you defile my daughter, who will never be the same again for mm. all intents and purposes. Mm. And here we are saying that you reform, you be, you know, you bring retribution. What happens to my daughter? Okay, so if we kill you, I know it doesn't really make it go away, does it? Mm. It doesn't change. But in that moment, as human beings, you want, it does something for you. You want that this person will suffer for the things that they've made to you and your loved ones suffer. Sounds terrible, but that's the truth. Hey. Hmm? Remember those MPs from Mount Kenya who were speaking in Gashagua's home the other day? Mm. And one of them called Wamaua. Yes. Said, wait, the Finance sure. Act is big buona. <laughs> You expect me to sit there to reading the uh, an MP is busy. It's like the Bible. An MP is busy. We have things. I cannot read that the whole finance act and see oh avocado has been mentioned, oh <laughs> milk, oh sweet, oh sweet, oh, sweet, oh, oh yeah. no <laughs> ah, come on. So we just pass it. Now <laughs> NCCK is criticizing MPs from Mount Kenya region who confessed that they did not understand some of the provisions of the Finance Act. NCCK Nyeri County Chairman, the Reverend Patrick Kimathi termed the Kenya Kwanzaa leaders as failures. Why? Failures. Why? And urged Kenyans to gauge them wisely in the next election. He said, it's a major concern for us when MPs in our areas come out to confess that they passed a law without reading it. We elected them to review and pass laws. This confession means they have failed in their main duty. This is something that we will encourage voters to consider in future elections. This is it. Molo MP Kuria Kimani, who's the chairman of the National Assembly Finance and Planning Committee, uh, accused KRA of misinterpreting some of the clauses of the Finance Act uh, that he passed. I want to tell KRA that I understand every clause of that legislation, I believe, Kuria Kimani, because I was the one who had led my fellow MPs in endorsing it in Parliament. There is no proposal in the Finance Act meant to impose tax on avocados. 
<laughs> this avocado has really riled you people, Abi. Ah, avocado. <laughs> <laughs> There's only a requirement for e teams, mm. farmers to register on e teams. <laughs> the aim is to net unscrupulous traders who've been importing avocado into the country and pretending to be local farmers to evade. We are not at saying that you register so that now avocado farmers can. No, 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 no. Mm. Anyway, it's news time, 7 a.m. Good morning, this is the News Wire. I'm Lea Ubaga. The doctor strike has today entered its 13th day and services in public hospitals may soon be hampered even as clinical officers are set to join in the strike. Kenya Union of Clinical Officers Chairperson Peterson Washira says they've given the government until Sunday midnight to address various grievances, failure to which they'll proceed on strike. The most unfortunate thing about this is that we have given the government enough time. We have tried diplomacy. We have followed the law. We have gone to the Ministry of Labor. We did conciliation. It failed because the government was not committed. We went to court and even after they were summoned through an order of the court, they still refused to come to the table. Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nahumisha on her part has emphasized that the government has put in place enough strategies to ensure a permanent solution is found regarding the health workers strike. But I want to take this opportunity to thank the healthcare workers who have continued to offer services to Kenyans even as we seek a lasting solution to these perennial problems. This being the case, KMPDU Secretary General Davji Atala has maintained that the government should be blamed for the ongoing strike. You realize that the government did not even read the strike notice or understood it well because the, the, most of these meetings there's just a back and forth aspect into the issues. And I must say that the strike that we are on is government fuel strike because they failed in their obligations and in their previous commitments over the same issues that we brought up now. Deputy President Rigardi Gashago has apologized to former First Lady Mamengine Kenyatta for what he termed as bad politics during the 2022 general elections. Speaking from his current residence, Gashago pleaded with Kenya's First Lady to forgive the political fraternity for mudsliding her during the campaigns. In the same breath, the Deputy President has called on leaders to embrace unity within the Mount Kenya region and the country. Not long after the 2022 polls, Gashagwa took on Mamangina in a political brawl on several occasions while also targeting former President Uhuru Kenyatta, her son. The rainy season will continue up until early June. Med Department Director David Gikungu has urged Kenyans to take precautionary measures as floods may be witnessed in various parts of the country. It is not just yesterday, I think even on uh, Saturday, if you notice there were rainfall reports in quite a number of places. It's going to continue. We expect a break on Thursday. And uh, after the break on Friday, we expect some parts to pick up again and to continue. Gikunga has also called on those living in areas prone to landslides to move to safer grounds, further calling on farmers to take advantage of the planting season. I think now it's advisable for, for us to sow what we have. There is sufficient moisture to support growth as we go into April, the peak month of the season. We expect the rainfall to be sufficient to support growth of crops in most parts of the country. More so given that we are expecting enhanced rainfall. The seven counts as four people, including a police officer who was on a rescue mission, have been reported dead following heavy rains in Nairobi.
And finally, the High Court in Maranga has termed life imprisonment as unconstitutional, stating that it is unreasonable and absurd. In a judgment by Justice Nixon Sifuna, he compared it to a death sentence, saying even though one is terminal and the other is not, they are the two sides of the same coin in terms of their severity and permanence. He added that the sentence permanently deletes a convict from society and violates the right to human dignity. That's the Newswire. I'm Lea Ubaga. Spice FM, Nakuru. All right, a few minutes after 7 o'clock, traffic hour is beckoning. In about 20 minutes or so, we'll get into it proper. Um, this is Jogo Road, and it's very busy as you're getting into the city. It's also busy coming in from Donholm, and this is on um, Savannah Road today. Very, very busy traffic. Let's just look up Manyanja Road doing the same thing. And then also coming in from Kangunda Road, just at the junction, it's very busy as well. Juja Road traffic as you cross over... Um, um, you cross over outer ring getting then into the city that has also started to build up and you just keep going north and then keep going west after that it's busy on the thicker super highway it's busy on Kiambu road and we're going to see the build up on Limuru road in no time second first rather first second third fourth fifth parkland avenues are all trying to get onto Limuru road this morning and it's already looking crazy state house road then going through towards Arboretum and then out towards Chiromo guess what busy as well Landy's was busy even before you woke up so that's what Tuesday already looks like and we're not even in traffic hour proper yet we're gonna keep an eye on things and see what it pans out to be let's talk on spice FMK on X hashtag the situation room This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room, the only way to so start your day. So somebody said, um... I'm in Saudi Arabia and I'd like to know more about this land that you people have been talking about in Lanette. Mm -hmm. I will tell them. Serenity Springs. Mm -hmm. Touch now, you see, I'm I too, I'm a good student. Right. The road going to Al Kalau. Right. As you approach Nakuru. <laughs> Sindio. Yes. Now, there is this big gate. What is the color of the gate? You will see it. Mm, the color it of the gate is green, green and, red. and red. Yes. It's there. You just walk and it's splendor and majesty and magnificence. Mm. Serenity Springs. Mm. Right? There are access roads that have already been done. They're Maram. Mm -hmm. There has already allocation has been made for you to put up whatever it is that you want to put up when you get into an estate kind of, you know, um, arrangement. Mm -hmm. The eighths of an acre already then demarcated properly. Yeah. There are waterways. All of this is already set up with you in mind it was done for you so that you don't have to come and do any more stress nothing so use the name properties i said you know what we came and we saw this place and all we could think was serene environment oh, yes. not too far from the city but just far enough for you to be able to enjoy the quietness and yes brings. serenity springs offers you an eighth of an acre for 1.499 million shillings oh yes you can pay a deposit of 10% mm. and then you can pay the rest in 30 days should this not be possible for you uh. you can then split it into installments uh -huh. you're paying for the serenity you're paying for the affordability you're paying for the comfort mm -hmm. I can see it I can see it I can see it you can see yourself there yes I can right 
So, our brother in Saudi Arabia, I'd like to talk to Username Investments. Please email them, diaspora at username.co.ke. Diaspora at username.co.ke. Or you can WhatsApp them, 0725 000 000 Again, 0725 000 000 Or you'd like to call them, you can call them directly, 0725 000 000 in the country, you can SMS them, send an SMS to this number, 20321. And the body of the SMS, right? Plot. That's it. Plot. <laughs> they will call you back and tell you more about the plot. Mm. Serenity Springs is in Lynette Nakuru. Our next guest is from Nakuru. He is Dr. Magare Kenyi. Good morning, Dr. Ari. Good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Good to see you. I'm also happy to see you. Very it's good. It's a good morning. Yes. It is. Um, it's yes. not a bad place. Rains have come. <laughs> yes. You know this road to Alcalao through Lanet? Yes, I know that. Yeah. Mm. It's Barbara Alami. Mm. And you've been to Alcalao. Yes. Scenic, beautiful place. Very good. I told you last time Nakur is a very good place. Uh, it's a very place. good place. So, oh, yes. You people of the city, you once you you get tired, just yeah. walk into. We we'll come to the new city. Nakuru. Now it's a new city. Then uh, they call it a. Uh, a, a city of uh, many opportunities, Very good. unlimited. That's a, a city of unlimited opportunities. Yes, it's the pink city. Yes, <laughs> the flamingo city. Yes, yes. Dr. Yes, a uh, city is not in today, but uh, he left me the proverb. The proverbs for this week are from Mauritius. <laughs> Listen to the proverb, and you know the tradition. You give us your interpretation of the proverb. So the, today's proverb: When the head is too big, it cannot dodge blows. When the head is too, too big, big, it cannot dodge blows. So essentially, from my understanding, that the head essentially, like us in the medical field, mm. is the one which, which runs the body. For example, if you have a problem with your hand or your leg, we can cut off, but your head you can't cut off. Mm. So essentially, when you are too big, you take responsibility. You cannot uh, bypass the back and send it to somewhere else. That's what I can say. Ah. Mm. Yeah. When you're the head, you all the responsibility must come to you. Yes. Good one. Okay, before you go, my, my issues are that because I'm a person who believes in fairness, mm. I also have a proverb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in fairness. You can, you, you, if you can allow me, I can give you, you can answer later or okay. now. Okay, yeah, okay. It's also from um, uh, uh, an African community or a Kisi community. Ah. Where he says, for example, there's a bird which you call a tinginya. A tinginya. Yes. <laughs> so that's a tinginya. They say that uh, the tinginya which is uh, wise mm. builds a house mm. early enough before the the rain rains. Mm. So you can answer now what that one means. <laughs> uh, or you can a wise a thing in your build a house <laughs> before it rains. Before it rains. <laughs> Ndu, yes. What's your interpretation of this proverb? Well, I, if you, you plan early oh. that you don't wait until it the rain is coming down before you look for shelter. Okay. So you plan early and get your ducks in a row before the catastrophe comes. Nespa? Think ahead. Yeah. Okay. Prepare ahead. Mm. Say it in Kiki now that proverb. Uh, in Kisi say it's in the form of a song we say Getting in your canine in the Kaga job won Brego to Agaswa Mai Getting in your canine in the Kaga job won Brego to Agaswa Mai, and which means that at the end of all, the day, all that was for singing, <laughs> yes, for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, that's for <laughs> so essentially it, it, it prepares for that. Okay. Okay, that's what it was said we prepare earlier mm. for the betterment of future. Yes. Okay. Asante sana. You have several cases that you've taken, public interest cases that you've taken to court. Yeah. The latest one is a, no sooner had the president appended his signature to make the affordable housing bill become an affordable housing act yes. than Dr. Magaragi Kenyi went to court. Yes. to challenge it this is the latest one yes. we'll talk let's start with this latest one why did you go to court um it's, it's because of the uh i uh, dr magari can you we went with uh, four other petitioners mm -hmm. uh pauline induta sharum kaka abuga firamon 
Chamli uh, Kyotondi. So all this, the five of us went to court mainly because of the act, where, uh, which was in our view, was not conducive to the Kenyans. Because when we go to court, we don't go for ourselves, mm. go for the Kenyans. So that's the major reason that whatever the initial act, which was um, the initial housing levy, which was anchored on the Finance Act, mm. According to the court found that there was some couple of laws. Mm -hmm. So the government in the process of trying to make it better did not solve the initial problem. Mm. So the the initial in fact the major problem is in, the, in terms of consumption of the idea. Mm. That's that's what I can say the, the major flow. The consumption is not that that good. That's how we went to court and then we challenged it. Mm. Well, so what's wrong with the conception what is it that the initial court order had yes. said or the initial court finding? essentially the among other issues the court said that the in the initial one yeah. there was the issue of the discrimination mm. uh, then the, there was issue of the uh, the structural framework all the legal framework for the what they call a housing levy mm. That's what I can say the, in the summer, those are the major issues. So the housing bill yes. addressed the structural framework yes. of the housing levy by creating the housing fund. Yes. Are you saying that it has not addressed the other issue? Yes. Now, by virtue that it was signed as an act, yes, I can say it hasn't. Mm. Among the major issues is what we call the, 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 the use of the public land. Mm. Like if you realize, uh, Eric, uh, land, especially public land, is held on trust by what you call uh, a commission called National Land Commission. Mm. But he, he, some, when you say the ha land is held in trust, it means you are holding it for now and the future generations. When you, me and you will not be there. Mm. So like in this one, for example, you see very well, the act purports to use, to, to in fact, the, the state that will give you free land. There is no land which is free in Kenya. Mm. All lands, if you realize, uh, Kenya has one uh, title which is called a mother title, mm. which ever one of us gets from that matter. Within that mother title, we have what you call a public land. Public land is supposed to be used for the public uh, good for us and the future generation. But in this framework, for example, if you see like uh, in section 41 of the Act, it purports to use public land without any procedures. How, for example, how the said uh, public land can be uh, can be utilized, and then they use, you build on public land, then you sell on private property as a private property. Or some as a, you completely own it, mm. so that. They, as you, if you can, if you, essentially that's essentially allocation of land illegally. Mm. Because, for example, at the end of the day, once, for example, you check for a school, mm. if you build a school on public land, that school will assist that society the entirety of the of the time. Mm. But in this aspect of the housing aspect, <coughs> you build on public land, then you sell into the private property private person or a corporation so once you have sold the owner of that uh, property you cannot return back to the public it becomes absolute property mm. of that person so what's your contention mm. Terry? yes is your contention you started by saying yes that public land is held in trusts yes. for use by the current and future generations yes do you conceptualize that to mean yes. that public land should never be existent for anything else that if we have these five acres yes. it is declared public land yes. we should never do anything with it because future generations will come and ask us why did you do it no i'm not saying that what public is? land can be legally be allocated and done anything with if the commission in charge of that one called national land commission is the one which helps holds a land on trust for us. So there must be a procedure. But for example, what we are seeing from now, uh, you find that the, the government mm. is ev evicting the residents 
of uh, of this uh, land I mean, right now we have like, like land in Duaraka, mm. these estates nyayo and everything is a big thing on hoping that it will build new land the, the difference between the few uh, what used to happen now the, those land those houses currently there are uh, are is a public land and the houses are for public mm -hmm. so eric uh, if for example you are the one who was living there mm. Then whatever aspect you get uh, greener pastures, you go somewhere else. Mm. Somebody else will come up in that house and live there and live it. Mm. Later on, if uh, my friend know also uh, or her son or he uh, or something like that, mm. later wants to house and that person you can just move in. But the current one, once you own that land, mm. that house. Mm no one else mm. because uh, if you realize the the sanctity of the title is that uh, once it's been once transferred, to, transferred to you 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 cannot uh, do it but maybe the issue here doctor yes. is yes is it following yes. due legal process yes that transfer yes from the public just like you said yes public land can be transferred through legal means yes is there anything in the Affordable Housing Act yes. that you find contravening other established laws and statutes on the transfer of public land? Yes, I said there are many. Number one, if you look at the fourth schedule of the Constitution, the housing function is the function of the county government. Mm -hmm. You will also check at section uh, Article 6.2. It says that the uh, national and the county government are distinct mm -hmm. so it, it means that the work of the national government is to, is to make policy on housing mm -hmm. now the actual implementation of that housing aspect should be done by the county government mm -hmm. but at the same time in addition to that the government is telling us mm -hmm. kenyans for those who are employed and unemployed that they will take our, your salary mm -hmm. Uh, then we use that salary to build houses, mm. but even after taking, we are, you are, we are not uh, uh, um, we are not uh, guaranteeing you that you will get a house. Mm. If you if you see the constitution very well, Article 40 mm. uh, on the issue of property of land or the aspect of right to property, mm. your salary is your private property. Mm -hmm. it, when somebody forces you to or, or deduct that salary mm -hmm. and then give that salary or use that salary to build a house for another person. That's essentially what I call the communist. If you realize, uh, Kenya what, is what's not the difference mm. between that and I'm, I'm deducted, my salary is deducted, it's called pay as you want, call it whatever you want to call yes, it. Yes. It's building a road in Nakuru and I'm not driving in Nakuru, yeah. it's you. But I'm saying uh, the, the aspect is that, that my tax is yes. paying for your house in Na for your road in Nakuru, Nakuru and your street lights in Nakuru. You, as, as Eric, you use you, indirectly or directly that road, but you in don't Nakuru. own it. You don't own it, yes. I don't exactly, yeah. I don't own it. Mm. And you use directly, for example, Eric, you told me you live in, in Kajiado. Mm. There are some goods. Uh, some mattress coming from Na Nakuru. Mm -hmm. You may, may not use physical that house, but by virtue of that uh, road in Nakuru, it helped that mattress to come from Nakuru to Kajiado. Mm -hmm. So essentially, we can comfortably say you have used it. Mm -hmm. The same thing like the so-called house uh, fuel levy. Mm -hmm. Fuel levy. There is no Kenyan, whether young or old, who does not use fuel. Mm -hmm. There are others who use directly through mm. their vehicles. Mm. There are others who, who use indirectly. Mm. That's what, what that one means is that if you are, you, you are, wherever you are living, you need some goods there. Mm. There will be some vehicle somewhere which you need a fuel mm. or some road to bring the, whatever goods and services to your place. So if you realize those, all those aspects mm. essentially is, is ensuring that at the end of the day, the house, the, the fuel levy is assisting all of us. But the house one is individual based and you own it. Okay. So what I hear then is that there is a contention with um, unconstitutionality here. Yes. Um, and stop me if I'm wrong, is that what the prayer is of the court is to hold this on the basis that we cannot have a situation whereby Kenyans are contributing, I mean, Vol um, mandatorily 
to then make way for houses to be built whereby other Kenyans will own them and this actually ownership of public land is unconstitutional. Is that encompassing the, what you're you're saying i'm saying the public land mm. is used to build the houses mm -hmm. and then and transfer sold ownership yeah. to private persons and that in itself is unconstitutional okay that's the first thing yes. there is a second part of what you call slavery and the servitude mm. the being a slave is working for somebody for free mm. so for example if i if i call eric to be doing my manual job but i don't pay him or mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. him so that's what exactly we're saying, that yeah. us, we're working very hard, what we call hard earned money. Mm. We have earned it through the salary. Yeah. Then some people tell us to contribute mandatory. Mandatory means you don't have an option. Yes. By them, you get your money in the bank, the, 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 it has already the, the been sleep has been done, yeah. something has done the sleep, then you cannot do nothing about it by force. And then that money is used to build houses for other, th for other people. Well, that's Why bit. are you saying other people, Dr. Yes. Why are you excluding yourself from that? I'm, I'm saying... Has there, is there any aspect of the Housing Act yes. that says mm. that the contributor to the housing levy yes. shall not benefit from the houses that are built? I can say no, there's no... There's no so answer. then you cannot say that your, your tax is going to build houses for others. But what I'm, I'm saying... The, even from the act, mm. not everyone who pays tax, he, he or she, can uh, he has a right to request a house. To request, mm. yes, a request, a request can be accepted or denied. But the, if you like, the yes, section forty-eight, it talks about allocation of land. Mm. It says it's, uh, there will be a regulations which will be done by the by the government through what they call the statutory instrument act. The regulations are subsidiary registration, mm -hmm. which essentially sort out the statute. Yeah. So that we don't know what to do. But the order said that one will, will, set out, will set out the conditions on who to own or the process of owning. Yeah. Which means the same conditions were not applied during levying. Mm. That you're gonna levy those who are who have uh, who, who have uh, who have achieved this condition yeah. during living stage mm. they did not tell us we would not leave you you don't uh, do a b c d okay but during allocation now uh, tables that so are uh, you saying that it should be left open and it should be blanketed whereby you're saying yes. by virtue of the fact that you paid mandatorily yes. there should not then be any kind of standardization or requirement then when yes. it comes to owning these homes leave it open you make a request you get a home by virtue of the fact that i've paid tax yes but the, the that, yes that should be like that but then that also brings a challenge we're close to f 40 or 50 million. Mm. Realistically, we can uh, uh, even if uh, we cannot build 50, we cannot million, 50 houses. million houses. Mm. We, we wish we would build, mm -hmm. but realistically, it's not possible. Uh -huh. For example, the, the challenge with that is that um, there will be others who will get the reality of the matter and the others who will not get. Whereas housing as, as a function is not a bad idea, mm -hmm. the challenge I have most is the mandatory nature of this housing levy if for example the government had for those who are willing to 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 levy and get a house so be it because the article 41 of the constitution talks about every individual has a right to own property the type the place the style everything some of us uh, eric mm. we are to uh, japan and housing we have already built others we are sorting out our mortgages. Mm. Others mm. have already been paid the housing uh, allowance and he or she is just comfortable. He doesn't want to own. Who said in Kenya you must own a house? There's some, that, that's, a, that's the mentality we have. Some people... But you've already said you own a house and that's, that's I'm your, saying, that's who your said argument. All people, I'm saying all the people. Oh, so you don't want others to own a house? I'm like saying you. not all people. Yeah, like for example, <laughs> there's some people, for example, like uh, even in some supermarket you realize. <laughs> The, their modus operandi yeah. is to operate on a rented premise. Yep. They don't have, even if they have land, they will never build. Mm. They say, let us uh, put my weight here. Mm. There are some people who say, I don't want to own a house the whole of my life. Mm. Is it this is or her all right to think that? You cannot force that Kenyans to own. But at the same time, you can force that, patient, that person 
to 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 combat sorry, pay the levy that's okay. the that's the challenge so you shouldn't have to force kenyans yes to pay to pay this tax to build houses for something that should be a voluntary act exactly okay should we force kenyans to pay a tax for education if dr makare kenya is not taking his children to public school yes. should he pay tax that goes to fund education public education Yes, it will, uh, yes, it's, it's possible. Why? Because Daktari uh, amejipanga. Watoto wake wanaenda shule ngambo. Nigel, the very good question. For example, if you talk about schools, hmm. because education is related to schools. Hmm. If we build land on a school, that school will benefit people around that area and down that. I love the others, the good aspect. There will be no nobody will own that 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 uh, school yeah you realize doctor yes that annually yes we allocate a budget to yes. education yes not all the money goes to building a school yes there's money that goes to buying a book that will be used by other people's children yes because we don't have children yes or our children are not in school but it's being used to buy books for other people's children yes chalks to be used by teachers to teach other people's <laughs> children yes and so on and so forth yes. should we say that if now for example my child is out of uh, school going age i should stop paying ile pesa iko element ya education kwa tax deduct don't don't charge me anymore because oh. i am not benefiting from currently in school the time i come back yes i will do that or i can only contribute the element that goes into development and infrastructure development for schools recurrent expenditure for education don't bill me no that's, that's can we extend this argument to no, that no, no we extent. cannot for example you realize the article uh, 2094 the government is allowed to collect taxes for the betterment of all kenyans but the, there is a catch this one is not a blank check you cannot wake up one day you 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 you, ask, you tax or you uh, do anything <laughs> The most important aspect is you have to follow the law. Mm -hmm. So among the issues I've, I've raised, that even in that school you are saying there must be a law, and that the law should not should not be against another uh, part of the constitution. For example, I've said mm -hmm. in Article Four, this is specifically on housing and property that a Kenyan has a right to own uh, property type and everything. Yeah. So at the end of the day, for example, we take in school, the school that school. Even if we contribute towards it, nobody, no individual person will have an exclusive right of that property. I've told you, for example, in this house that we currently have, if you have, um, if you own that house, it's a, a government property, a government property, a government house, Ukichoka, another one comes. Mm. There's no problem with that. But the challenge, even this school, if we contribute to this school, later now, Eric comes mm. and becomes an exclusive owner. That's the unconstitutional part of it. That's because not, in that we have, we have contributed with. in building it, but in terms of ownership, we are we not owning it together. Yes, okay. we are not owning it together. Let's take a break. We'll continue the conversation shortly. 28 minutes to 8. Our guest this morning is public interest litigant and human rights activist, Dr. Magare Gekenyi, who is based in Nakuru. He has several cases in court challenging various things from the government side. For example, the current one that we're discussing, the affordable housing law. He has gone to court and said, no, I'm challenging this law. Yeah, there are various other pending cases in court. Which one? For example? There's, there's one uh, dealing with the IDs, mm -hmm. the churches of IDs. Mm -hmm. There's another one uh, dealing with the e-citizen, mm -hmm. where parents were forced to, to pay. Mm -hmm. including what they call convenience fee of 50 bob mm -hmm. which has no basis or backing of the law mm -hmm. so those are things we're saying that if you have no backing you make a, a policy or something of aspect mm -hmm. without any backing mm -hmm. of the law or any uh, public participation yes. then we're saying it's unconstitutional among others okay continuing this conversation shortly this is the situation room the only way to start your day Thank you very much, Eric, and it's good to be at the Situation Room. Always a pleasure coming here. This is the most challenging uh, interview panel in Kenya. You guys are very well informed, 
And as you can see, Charles today very philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> to be poor in this country is the greatest sin you can commit, not just from a legal perspective, but from life generally. Yeah. It, it, it is very, very skewed. We've just had uh, on the floor of parliament, just most recently, a leader within the ODM saying that Sisi Nimombe is a baba. Yeah. Which means that you are willing to be milked dry. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot force me to believe. I'll give away. If it's a land that I'm told to return to you, I will. Okay? Because the court has said so. But I'll continue saying, Oh, what were many Russia? That's all that I'm doing. <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. The weather with Spice FM. Party conditions in Nairobi this morning will see highs of 27 and highs of 27 as well in a sunny Nakuru at 17. It's 17 and sunny in Nyeri with highs of 26 and also see highs of 26 in a sunny Eldoret at 15. Sunny in Mombasa at 27 with highs of 33, while Malindi will see highs of 34. It's currently sunny at 27. Sunny at 22 in Kisumu with highs of 30, while Kakamega will see highs of 30. It's currently sunny at 20. Kampala this morning is sunny at 20 with highs of 28, while Dar es Salaam at 25. Sunny going to highs of 33. Um, into a mostly cloudy Johannesburg at 20 at 13 we'll see highs of 23 and highs of 33 in a sunny Mogadishu at 29 it's 15 and cloudy in Addis Ababa with highs of 22 Lagos is clear at 26 highs of 33 while Kinshasa is mostly clear at 24 with highs of 34 up your life. Really busy traffic on Landis Road as we get into traffic hour proper this morning and it's also quite busy as you get to the roundabout just approaching um, Globe Cinema. Um, as you look on Limuru Road, all the avenues from Parklands connecting to that and there is heavy, almost painful traffic on Kiambu Road uh, this morning. I'm going way past the DCI headquarters gate. Same thing my goodness, on the thicker superhighway this morning, we're looking at another situation again, coming in from Roira at the Eastern Bypass, uh, and then through to Kenyatta University, and then out towards um, Garden City. It's heavy traffic, and uh, it's bumper to bumper all the way through towards the Pangani underpass. Looks like is that not, that's not letting up just yet, but we are in traffic hours, so to be expected. The Northern Bypass not looking too bad. How's that for an escape route? Uh, coming in from Ruaka, and then touching on the United Nations Avenue out towards Limuru Road. Um, you'll do your business without too much of a headache. As you come in then from Waiakiwe, also heavy traffic, heading out towards Westlands and this whole area coming in from Zima Springs out towards James Gishoro. Busy, busy, busy. So let's see what happens as we come through the morning. Let's talk on Spice of MKE on X hashtag the Situation Room. Are you ready? Okay. Spice FM. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice to eight. Our conversation with uh, Dr. Magaragi Kenyi continues. He has several cases that he has taken to court. Public interest litigation, several of them before court. One of them is what we've just been discussing, the Affordable Housing Act in court. You've also gone to court to challenge the um, new charges on getting of IDs mm. and passports and all. You've also gone to court to challenge the e-citizen, the requirement that school fees be paid through e-citizen, the convenience fee on e-citizen. What else? Uh, the, there are a couple of other uh, petitions. Mm. Uh, I remember as we talked. So the, the, the main thrust of this is you look at something and you feel mm. that this is going against what's been laid out in the constitution yes. or what's laid out in law yes. or there's a step that's been skipped in the implementation of this particular you know edicts or in the realization of this new law for example in the affordable housing when you're saying it's unconstitutional it's unconstitutional because not everybody is going to benefit from this and yet you're mandatorily taxing 
people who may not directly benefit from it. Mm. You're also saying that you're excising public land and converting it into, into private property without following due process. Are you sure there's no due process being followed? Yes, I'm, I'm sure. Because uh, for Wombra, what I've said, mm. there's no, even if you read everywhere, there's no law which allows public land to be used for private use, generally. What it says that if you want to convert public land to private property, there's a process to okay. conversion. What is that process? By the National Land Commission. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's a body which, uh, and if you check section article 62, uh, sub article 2 and sub article 3, it talks about the National Land Commission, this function, and how it's supposed to process. The number two, Article 63, also talks about community land. This also is on for the use of the community. But from what we are, we are, we are seeing, even those community land is also targeted as free land, in quotes. For those houses to be built, mm. after being built, then the land is taken to uh, for private property. You know, uh, Eric and Ro, once mm. A private uh, land which was community, uh, the, the house had been built, and I've given the private property that the owner of that private property. There's nothing you can do about it. You cannot revert back. Let me ask unless there is what you call compulsory accusation of the same. If if the country yes wanted to create a new community, say like. Um, Somewhere where there's huge tracts of ADC land. Yes. We want to put up a new city here. Yes. This new city is going to have, you know, uh, government offices. It's going to have public amenities like schools and hospitals. Yes. It's also going to have residential areas. Yes. And these residential areas then shall be owned, and some shall be owned privately and all. Are you saying that this should not happen? It can happen. The, only, the most important part of it, you have to convert public land if you want to sell completely to the private person, convert that public land to private property. Okay. Then that, now the pro, like for example, you are saying the build amenities, schools, that's public. So they, you don't even need to explain what happens with that. There's no, then the section whereby now you build those houses on public land and sell it to private person. Is it for public good? It's for public good. But we are saying mm. the, the, that land is held on, tra uh, on trust for the public. Public means kill them too. Mm. For example, if I own land, for example, if I come to this place and I put a house, something there, a school for the whole area around here, there's no problem. But if I just build for my own public, uh, private yes. aspect, yeah. that's not the problem. For example, even in addition, in fact, if you take uh, section 52 of the Act, it brings a, a, another, another idea. That you, once you have been given this housing unit, you cannot sell it for for duration of time whatever aspects mm -hmm. there is no justification under the constitution mm -hmm. once you're paid for them uh, for that housing unit it, it, it idea should become absolute uh, absolute um, you become the absolute owner of that that unit yeah and there is no role to tell me if you are government eric i've given you a house don't do this. Don't do ABCD. Don't do it like that. The uh, human rights or the right to uh, right to, to property, right to health, right to education shall not be limited. The Constitution said unless under what you call Article Twenty Four, it gives an, uh, conditions which like rights shall be limited. Mm. For example, you are giving you are, you are giving a person a house. At the same time, you are limiting that person. Because once I bought it, it's my it's land. Fine, I can do it. Yeah, I, I can decide to give. Well, there's argument for that, Dr. Yes. You, you're saying that yes. for X number of years, yes, you shall not transfer it. Yes, and there's argument for that. Yes, it's so that you we ensure that you enjoy the benefit yes. for which you have paid this house, which has been constructed using taxes of the general public, because we said that we want Dr. Magari Kenyi to enjoy the benefit of a good, affordable house. Now we want to limit so that people do not come to you and confuse you and you end up selling. 
Uh, Eric, if for you, X number of years, it's, it's not unlimited. The cup is there. I mean, that's even a one year. Yeah, let's give for example one year. That's why for one of the reasons. So you why, do not want even not one year. Yes, one of the reasons why Eric, I tell you, for example, I know you you have some idea about criminal law. Mm -hmm. For example, if a, a child of two years or four years makes a mistake mm. under the criminal justice system, mm. that person cannot, that child cannot be taken to court mm. for that crime. Mm. Yeah. Because it's assumed that child does not have capacity to think. He can think that some people, children, children are even brighter than adults. Mm. Yeah. But for according to the law, he does not have capacity. Yeah. By virtue you have reached 18 years, the law presupposes that you have a capacity to think what's good for you and what's good for uh, and what's not good for you. We cannot have a situation whereby some people think somewhere and it decides Eric is thinking is bad. Let me assist him and uh, her sister, his, his sister, and all. Let me uh, try to think about her. every adult. In no, is assumed to have a capacity to think what's good for him or herself. Mm. If one, for, for myself, for example, there's what you call hierarchy of needs. Sometimes I can get a house today. Tomorrow, for example, I have a very bad disease which can kill me in the next two to three months. In my own judgment, I would say my health is more important than that, this house. It is better I sell it, I stay without a house, but I live. So according to that point, time T, I've, I've made a, I have a capacity to think that this house is less important than my life. Mm. So that's why we're saying, once you'll be given a property, it's a, that's why even uh, your employer, you do, after, at the end of the month, he gives you a salary. He or she, the employer, does not tell you what to do to buy mandazi, Kuku mm -hmm. and everything. <laughs> it's assumed after you've gotten the salary, it's you have a capacity mm. to think what's good for you, and what's good what's not good for you okay yes. i understand what you're saying yes on that point yes i want to ask the other side of this because with litigation yes. the assumption is that um you don't have an, an an alternate solution what we are trying to do right now is stop this thing which we see to be an abrogation of rights of kenyans yes. okay yes but we do also at the same time recognize that there is a housing issue in terms of deficit that not enough kenyans are living in what is what's the word that's often used um squalor squalor exactly yes. too yes. many at kenyan are living in a situation that should not be and that the government or the state feels a responsibility to be able to fill that gap and say look at the very least let us provide housing that is uh, respectful that is affordable and that you know has people with a roof over their heads in one way or another As we see these petitions being brought before the court, again, the assumption is that one wants to just stop what the government is doing. But can we l imagine that one wants to propose a better option to government in terms of what needs to be done for this need that is clearly there? Okay. What I can say, number one, mm. maybe let me correct you. Mm. We want to stop this Housing Act. Okay. The way it is. Okay. But there's no doubt, a normal human being, even Kenya, say that we need housing. Is the implementation way. For example, even the previous government, oh, I'm sure you have seen some houses being built somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was nobody was being forced to, to buy or to, 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 levy, to pay for the levies. Article 21 of the Constitution says the government is in order to fulfill those housing aspects. Those fundamental it's supposed to promote and fulfill rights and fundamental fundamental freedoms. So by that statement, it does not mean you force me. For example, even in Article 40 says everybody has a right to health, higher standards of health. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a, a right to access higher standards of even education. Mm -hmm. But by virtue of having a higher standard, the same constitution does not say you you force Kenyans to pay for the same. It says, for example, if it's education, make education accessible. For those who are willing, they can access the schools. Mm. So that, if, for example, you have education, you don't have to go there. If you, your health is good, you don't have to go to the hospital. But make hospitals available. Mm. So that's one of the solutions I've said, number one, let the national government uh, provide policy for the housing. 
it is not my my words it's the constitution mm. we say the national government should this among other functions just policy i said policy is just direction mm. then uh, the county government pursuant to article 62 and the fourth schedule paragraph 8d it says the housing as a function is a function of the county government mm -hmm. we can see there are 47 governments mm -hmm. let them within themselves implement the, the housing uh, project among the things which we want to implement among other things the government can also uh, do what you call legislation on taxation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of even uh, the the cost of materials they can give incentives. Mm. Even they can give incentives to even um, investors mm. to come invest. We're using their land. Okay. And for those for those who are willing, the world mm. is willing mm. to buy those units from those. Uh, Eric, I know you remember. This is not the first time uh, people are building uh, many gated houses and uh, buying out. Mm. There has been the, in the real estate. This one is taking place every every minute, every second. Mm. This is not something new. The only challenge with the, the new aspect on this aspect is that the government is now forcing us. That, that's the mandatory nature of it. Mm. And in any case, for example, my needs may not be yours. Mm. There are some, you can tell, for example, even right now, there are some people who are retiring in the next two months. Those people must pay tax, uh, le this levy, before they go. Yeah. What happens to their money or the two or three months? Mm. No, no, nobody cares for it. And I realize, for example, the people have different cultures. Some people do not even think of living like my grandmother, who is uh, 101, living on the fifth floor in Embakasi. Mm. She will feel very comfortable living in Kisi Mokonga there, relaxing with his grandchildren. Mm. So if there is this uh, young lady to go and live in, uh, in Mudega, the, the 19th floor, then I think you are not f being fair to him or her. So sometimes I'm saying about the, the, the types on how we were about it. in addition mm. this housing levy that's what they call public participation mm. the government uh, uh, purported to do some public participation mm -hmm. but they did not tell us what was the result mm. i've even uh, wrote to them to tell me what what did the kenyans say they did not sometimes the the, the 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 reason why we have public participation the major reasons is to find what do kenyans want because, uh, like, for example, the government is given power through the, the, what they call delegated authority. All the sovereign power belongs to the, be to the people. These people then, um, uh, they, they, they donate that land to, and that power to this leg leg legislature, judiciary, and the executive. Mm. So it's assumed your power by the executive is, is donated. But the, the donator has a say. For example, in the last uh, finance bill, seven out of nine Kenyans, 69 percent to be exact, mm. through a, a poll which was done by TIFA, mm. show that Kenyans don't want the housing. Seven out of ten. Mm. Then one wonders if seven out of ten don't want, and the the, 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 the Kenyans are the donator of power. The donated one cannot no force the donator to do what. Mm. to do what he doesn't want mm, to do. so those are the things i'm trying to put across the, at the end of the day uh, let us try as much as possible do what the kenyans want okay yes that's what i'm trying to put across mm. the law as it is right now yes went through several stages yes there was a drafting it was published yes uh, it was subjected through public participation in various forms after it was published it was accessible to everybody yes okay there was debate in parliament yes and even beyond that, there has been a lot of debate on the issue of housing. So number one thing I've heard you say, and we're in agreement, mm. is that we cannot argue on the need for housing, particularly yes. Yes. urban housing. It's a crisis. Yes. And a solution needs to be found. Yes. We cannot argue on some of these provisions in the Bill of Rights. Yes. You have a right to absolute ownership of your property, but also you have a right to access, to access housing. Good housing good sanitation, good health. You have a right to an education. You have all these rights. And when you have rights, then there's a responsibility of the government to ensure that you are enjoying those rights. Can you to explain to me, for example, yes. the clauses on how you're raising this uh, affordable housing levy, how you shall manage it, and how the houses shall be constructed, how the houses shall be accessible to all Kenyans, those who contribute and those who don't. Yes. What 
what and uh, uh, what did you what did they what answers were you given normally you, you write memorandum mm -hmm. yes i can say yes i did mm -hmm. you can do it as an organization or you can do it as an individual mm -hmm. we did it through uh, various uh, uh, what you call uh, csos mm -hmm. there are various uh, Organization what you call the human rights uh, groups, yep. which we we wrote, mm -hmm. uh, saying what we think and what we how we were about it. Mm -hmm. But my, uh, Eric, I know you remember very well. Mm -hmm. uh, you, they have said you, uh, this is in the public. They have said, "Mpenda muspenda." Uh, others will always say that uh, those who are against this one, they will burn in hell. Mm -hmm. Isn't that specific? So uh, some part of the the government has what we call the super majority mm. whatever you say ends there mm. but the, what they want is what they, what they want to improve but in fairness yes through this process of parliament yes several aspects of this of the original bill were yes. amended yes what ended up in the final act yes. is not what was initially published yes that means that there was some input that came in from somewhere yes who are being listened to yes was any of your inputs did any of your inputs contribute to an amendment? No, uh, none of them. Because if you realize the hallmark of this one, mm. of this bill, if you can summarize, is the use of public land, given being the, the private property, and uh, Kenyans being forced to be the housing levy. Those are the, what I can say, the, the hallmark mm. of, your of, objection. of the objection. For example, you can have a housing uh, project where everybody contributes. Yeah, those who are willing, he can contribute. Mm -hmm. Those who don't, more like that, then there will be no problem. The challenge is that that aspect whereby the, the mandatory nature of this levy, I can see the hallmark. Other things are small, small, uh, what I can call small prints. Mm. Mm. The big uh, prints is when you are you are salary, which is a, you are private property. Not just your salary is a private property. In that you can do without with it. Nobody else can tell you what to do with your salary. But taxes and levies mm. are mandatory. Doc. Yes, and they come from salary. Exactly, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All of them. So before the levy, at that time, before the levy was implied, uh, then you must have a justification. For the, for example, if the government, by any chance, let us just put an arbitrary device. If they say, I would tax everybody uh, a thousand to give to Eric, and it pro passes those processes, and it becomes, well, it comes signed, mm. and then uh, we, we get taxed and we are given. Mm. That is legal by virtue of being that it passed all the stages. But from the constitutional provisions, it means some Kenyans, their personal property has been removed to give to you. That is the, the unconstitutionality of it. Because remember, there's a difference between legality and the constitutionality. If you read the, the hierarchy of, of, of laws, mm. the constitution is on the top. Mm. That's true. Yes. I'm still stuck on the exclusion that you're bringing. Yes. That this will benefit some people. Yes. Why do you say some people? Because, for example, in Kenya, Kenya is not a communist state. Uh -huh. Communism is whereby everybody essentially works for the benefit of the whole community. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's no, nobody owns land. The, the, all the land is owned as a communal, everything. But if you realize that's not true in Kenya. Mm -hmm. You realize the history of land, uh, land laws, that was the initial one. Mm -hmm. But as, as time was by, private property became an idea that if, if Eric uh, has property A, Mm. Then that property, for all practical and intents, is the property of Eric. So nobody else has powers. But Dr. Ari, I'm wondering the exclude. Look, yes. if you contribute to the housing levy yes. today, yes. it goes and builds a house. For right? somebody else. Not for somebody okay. else. For, who, for any other Kenyan yes. to benefit. So that's what I'm saying, okay. person X. When Dr. Magaregi Kenyi comes to buy this house, yes. he is not given the house for free. Yes. Magaregi Kenyi pays yes. for the house yeah. and the money it goes into the housing levy yes. fund. Yes. All right? So the housing levy fund has not given Magaregi Kenyi a house. Mm. Yes. Because Magaregi Kenyi has paid for the house. Yes. So I'm stuck on when you say that this housing levy is going to give people houses. Let me Why are you removing yourself from the equation and who is this who is getting a free house? For example, uh, I've said like that, for example, mm. this house, for it to be built, it will need money. 
Yes. You need cement, some yes. steel yes. and everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what happens? Number one, land is given for free in quotes by the government. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a land. Mm -hmm. Public land is given for free. Mm -hmm. Then some investors, I call them shadow investors, mm -hmm. currently they are hanging on the wings. They come and build these houses. Mm -hmm. Then from what I've been told, close to 70% of, essentially the, uh, the, of that aspect, they pay for themselves. Then we get 30%. Or, or put it the other way around. That uh, we use this, everybody gets taxed, we get into a pool, mm -hmm. then we use the money in the pool mm -hmm. to build houses. Once we build, we sell to somebody X. Mm -hmm. So there are two problems with that. Number one, I've been forced. Mm -hmm. Number two, there are some people who will pay, but not get to a house. So let us start, stop at there. This person who has paid, but has not received the houses. That's not the, the problem part of it. I think you're seeing it from an end point of view, but there's no end. It ends when everybody gets a house. Okay, that's what you're saying. <laughs> but what I'm saying... There's no, there's the, no sunset uh, oh, clause in this particular law. But Dr. Ali, yes, we get your point. And thank you very <laughs> much oh. for joining us. Always a pleasure yes. uh, getting to understand the thinking behind somebody who is working so hard tirelessly, filing cases in the middle of the night yes. after spending days in hospital. Mm. Um, good to have you here. Yep. Okay, mm. my uh, parting shot otherwise, I'll say thanks a lot for inviting me. Mm. And the other aspect, I always say that let us work as a team. So that the housing is important, but at the end of the day, let it be voluntary and public land, we protect it. And we protect everything and this act so that we ensure the future generation for us and the future generation, there is what they call prosperity. Right. At the end of the day, we will have a better society than we found it. Indeed. Indeed. 8 a.m. Good morning. Clinical officers have threatened to go on strike together with doctors whose strike is on its 13th day. The Kenya Union of Clinical Officers Chairperson Peterson Mashira says they've given the government until Sunday midnight to address various grievances, failure to which they'll proceed on the strike. The most unfortunate thing about this is that we have given the government enough time. We have tried diplomacy we have followed the law we have gone to the ministry of labor we did conciliation it failed because the government was not committed we went to court and even after they were summoned through an order of the court they still refused to come to the table health csc's in Ahumicha, however says that the government is doing all it can in order to address the grievances that have been raised by both the doctors and clinical officers but I want to take this opportunity to thank the healthcare workers who have continued to offer services to Kenyans, even as we seek a lasting solution to these perennial problems. This being the case, KMPDU Secretary General Dov Giatella has maintained that the government should be blamed over the ongoing strike. Do you realize that? The government did not even read the strike notice or understood it well because the, the, most of these meetings there's just a back and forth aspect into the issues. And I must say that the strike that we are on is government fuel strike because they failed in their obligations and in their previous commitments over the same issues that we brought up now. Farmers have called on the government to compensate them for the expenses they've incurred by purchasing fake subsidized fertilizer. They say despite the government promising to take legal action against those distributing the fertilizer, they request should be considered, failure to which this year's planting will be affected. Tulionyesha mbolea vizuri, mbolea safi, lakini kwa sasa ukiangalia zile tumepewa, tumepewa, changarawe, tumepewa manyua. Uriuti sasa hii, sindio ni msuri. I love you, but this is it. Sasa kusema ingia na kufusa. Sasa taka kufusa ki kama hii mbali ambaye. Kuliko tu miso wa wa kulima namna hii. Hiri turudishi ya tu be mbali wasabi. Aho turudishi ya pesa yetu tunununue kwa maindi. 
and the suspect who was arrested in Molo for masquerading as a GSU officer will be arraigned today. The suspect who was arrested dressed in GSU uniform is said to have been working alongside an accomplice who is also in custody. The officer and his accomplice would reportedly introduce themselves as GSU officers attached to the Molo jury farm camp before terrorizing and robbing locals. The High Court in Maranga has termed life imprisonment as unconstitutional, stating that it is unreasonable and absurd. In a judgment by Justice Nixon Sifuna, he compared it to a death sentence, saying even though one is terminal and the other is not, they are the two sides of the same coin in terms of their severity and permanence. He added that the sentence permanently deletes a convict from society and violates the right to human dignity. That's the news wire. I'm Lea Ubaka. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. At a few minutes after eight o'clock, uh, traffic heavy in some parts of the city, manageable in others. Are you coming off of um, Ngong Road, getting out into the city? You should be okay. There's traffic as you approach the junction between Riara Road and Ngong Road and Naivasha Road. So um, be, as you get beyond that, you'll be all right. Coming off of Thicker Superhighway, it is heavy. Also on Waiaki Way, very heavy. The Red Hill Link Road coming off of James Gishiro has some traffic as you then try to approach uh, Limuru from the other side. Limu Road, rather, from the other side. Limu Road now coming full circle to touching on Wangari Mathai is actually very busy. It's also busy on um, Kiambu Road, very, very busy on the Thicker Superhighway this morning, and traffic is piling up even as we go along. So it's likely to be quite a sore spot this morning, but patience will pay. At some point, you'll be all right. Coming off the Eastern Bypass, there is some traffic as well. Um, Again, but manageable. Inbound traffic will take you through towards um, North Airport Road and then coming in from Cabanas towards the junction at Sembakasi. Traffic on outer ring, inbound traffic more so. So an eye on things is what we're doing right now. We're in traffic hour. Let's see what happens through Tuesday. Let's talk through the morning just in case you get to a sticky spot. Let us know and we'll see what alternate routes are available. And we'll talk on Spice FMKE on X. Hashtag the Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, newshound, a man who believes in punching up not down. Six minutes after eight this. Good morning. Welcome to the third of the Situation Room this morning. It's still not Thursday. You want it to be Thursday from last Thursday. Yeah. Okay, it's till Tuesday. It's till the 26th. Mm. We are still in March. And this is still the situation room. Yeah. Asante Sana for joining us. Username Investment Limited reminding you about Serenity Springs in Lanette, Nakuru City. On the road from Nakuru to Olkalao. Mm. It's a beautiful, beautiful road that goes through scenic route all the way into Old Kalao. Old Kalao. Through a place I told you the other time I told you the place is called. Wait. It starts with an N and there's a D. Dead Deru. No. There's an N and there's a D. Yes. Ndu. Yes. <laughs> Again. Something else. Yes. Not Rudugiti. Ndu and Ndu. Ndu Ndu. Ndu Nduri. Ndu <laughs> Nduri. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yes. That place called Ndunduri. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Ndunduri, that's where you now find the junction, the road that comes from uh, Nyandarwa, mm -hmm. uh, Nyahururu. Okay. And the other one that comes from Rakarao and from Gyugyu. 
and from Nakuru, okay. they meet at Dondori. Dondori. Beautiful place. Mm. Now, on that road from Nakuru heading towards Dondori, mm -hmm. there you will find Serenity Springs. You will see what they've done. They've basically put up the fence, and the fence, you will not be able to, you will not mistake the fence. Mm. What are those colors? Green and? Red. Yes. Mm. Green and red posts. And you'll see a green and red gates. And looking inside, you will see trees. Looking inside, you will see maram roads have been done, looking very, very good. Mm. Looking inside, you will see some water tank somewhere because they've sunk a borehole. Water is available. You will see power lines and you'll see a transformer because power is just there. And all they're saying is, come. Just come. Mm. Come. The invitation is mm. open. It's open. Open arms. Come. Mm. You want to find out more information about that? You can WhatsApp zero seven zero five Abby triple zero triple two. Yes, and you can also give them a call. You can also send the word plot mm. to what two zero two zero three twenty one three twenty one. All yes. the information you need about that will come to you just because you sent the word plot mm. to that number. Find out how you today can get a piece of Serenity Spring. Kabisa, kabisa, please. Please make sure that you do that. Our next conversation is going to be, this is another public interest conversation. End of March is coming. The Kenya Re uh, Revenue Authority told us, uh, March, please, everybody, try and get on to E-Teams. Mm. What is E-Teams? Electronics, tax, invoice, management mm. system. Um, we hosted the boss of E-Teams at KRA here a couple of weeks ago and she told us yeah yeah we're working on things we're taking feedback from the public we're seeing what they're saying we are making things work so that it can function for everybody today there have been some complaints that we've seen people telling us please can you tell those KRA people to come and tell you because hey <laughs> things are not working particularly last week on the 20th when everybody was trying to file for their VAT returns what things happened and that's why she's here Hakamba Wagwe is the manager in charge of e teams at the kenya revenue authority Hakamba, good morning morning to you eric good to have you back here thank you i'm also pleased to be here again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> salimi andu jambo si jambo very good <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> she always asks why what do you mean by si jambo yeah i just not what, what does si jambo mean it's just uh sina jambo but it's 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 short of sina, sina neno mm. oh. so you just say si yeah. jambo mm. oh. just to, to to reduce the time you are responding to a greeting <laughs> okay. mm. Mm. yeah mm. in all the years that i've been asking that question you guys have never made it so clear <laughs> yeah you so never I mean, get it <laughs> you just clear never get it explanation of what it means mm. Mm. Hopefully just like the this. e teams will be just as clear as that simple straightforward <laughs> yes. yes i tell you it's like what they say in hausa that is Hausa. The Hausa for Ndunduru. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to uh, welcome you with the day's proverb. As you can see, CT is not here today. Okay. He's trying to get his e-team sorted. Mm. <laughs> it might take a whole day. It's a whole day affair, clearly. Before the deadline. Yeah. Because he was here and he kept telling, you know, I'm doing two, 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 two. <laughs> And then it says to Ruru. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him, you go yeah. get it sorted. I have the day's proverb. This week, the proverbs are from Mauritius. Okay. And the proverb for today is, when the head is too big, it cannot dodge blows. Okay. Um, when the head is too big. Uh, basically, I, th I think for me, I'm going to take the from the angle of um, the surface area the head is big mm. and uh, why it can't ta uh, uh, dodge blows um, in Kiswahili they say hata kama mtu hana shabaha when they aim at that head because it's big they they they, they should not miss mm. now that's the literal meaning um uh, now when we go to the definition of it basically if you're doing something that is impactful mm. uh, it can be negative it can be positive you're just affecting uh, maybe society or affecting other people then you 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 stand uh, criticized or you 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 will be judged or, or there'll be a lot of noise i think a good example is e-teams mm -hmm. 
I think it's a very good example. <laughs> it has a it, very big head. It, it's a very big head and uh, it cannot uh, it getting the blows that it is getting means that it's it's having an impact on all of us and it's something that maybe we are going to talk about today but mm. but uh, yes a big head that is it teams. There are people who think it's blocking their way to prosperity and that's yeah. why they're trying to Can't stone see it. the front <laughs> because this big head is yeah. in the way. They're trying to stone it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's start from the very basics. And um, we'll be opening up the phone lines in the next hour, but okay. we also want to pick all the questions, comments, complaints. If you want to throw a fit, throw a fit at Hakamba. She's here to take all the blows. You can post all the comments and questions on our social media as well at Spice of MKE on YouTube, on Facebook, on X, on Instagram. Let's engage on this particular one. Take us to the very beginning, E-Teams. Where did this come from and what is it? Okay, so, so today I'm going to have a different definition of ETIMS for, mm. for the record. Mm. So ETIMS is not a tax. <laughs> <laughs> ETIMS is a, 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 a tool that we are using to collect information. Uh, the last time when I was here, I talked about ETIMS being a, a solution that is helping us uh, transmit uh, transaction data from the trader premises to KRA. Uh, today I find it important to say it is also not a tax. Uh, the same way, uh, right now, the traders are already maintaining records of their sales and purchases. What we are asking is that the records of sales and purchases to be passed through items. Okay. So, so in a nutshell, that's what it is. Okay. How different is it from what we've been doing before? It's, it's automated. Now we are using technology before. Uh, up to last year, if we, for example, we, we had to come for an audit at your premises or a compliance check, we were okay with seeing the manual receipts, the cash sale receipts, when you are looking at how you came up with your income tax liability or VAT liability. But now we are moving to, to, to a space where this information is availed to KRA uh, through a technology that is ETIMS so that uh, we have visibility of this tech, uh, these uh, transaction details in advance, even before we make a decision whether you need to be, to be audited or we need to con conduct a compliance check, we already have the information that is guiding us to tell us whether or not we should go that direction because we have the information that we can use to verify your tax liability with mm. in advance from our premises without coming to to disturb you on the ground okay mm. yeah you know we started with the electronic tax registers mm. okay those gadgets that were uh, bought and every transaction then you have to go and input and it generates a receipt mm. then it said let's connect these ones electronically and you can now connect it to the system so it sends information to carry i thought you already had that and it was working it was working for for a few uh, when you look at it with the focus of teams we had focused that was teams now when we connected it to to the internet uh, it was for only vat registered taxpayers but then um, I, as i mentioned the last time uh, with a consideration from the feedback that we are receiving from the public we had to scale down and uh, consider having the free software for the lower end uh, taxpayers who are VAT registered still so that they could use ETIMS also so that now those ones who are in the VAT space either could use the, the Teams devices or they could have a free software installed on their, uh, on their uh, communication devices or they could have the credentials to log into the KRA system, uh, especially those ones who are doing services uh, for purposes of generating invoices. But then now, uh, with the Finance Act 2023, we opened that space. Not, it's not now limited to VAT registered taxpayers. Now it's open for taxpayers who are not registered for VAT. That means anyone who has business income, if he's a resident or he or she's a resident, or is a non-resident with permanent establishment, now they also need to onboard and now use E-Teams. Now these ones don't have room in Teams because Teams we limited it to VAT. Uh, now they all need to be on E-Teams. When I came here last, I think I mentioned that we were, we were also thinking of scaling down once again because from the feedback we received, uh, some of the taxpayers felt even E-Teams is too complex for some demography of, of our public. So. We went back again and we've worked uh, honestly very hard and uh, right now we have the, the e-citizen platform hosting an, an electronic tax invoicing solution 
we have a ussd solution as we speak there's a mobile app we are comp com uh, completing the modalities of having it hosted we have to meet some requirements on the Play Store, mm -hmm. so that's what is being worked on. And in in the in, in within this week, we should have it hosted on the on the on the uh, Google Play Store. Mm -hmm. So now we would have those three solutions available for uh, taxpayers who feel uh, perhaps the other uh, solutions are a bit complex. And these ones are actually very simple. And uh, as as we speak, for example, the citizen platform is being used by over 26,000 uh, taxpayers. And these are, are really, when you look at the uh, statistics, so what we are seeing, they are supplying to the retail outlets. So the, you, what you call mamamboga, mm. wale wanapeleka skuma. Mm. Skuma, to, tomatoes, uh, vegetables to, the, to our retail outlets, the supermarkets right now. There are some supermarkets who really worked hard and had their, 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 their vendors mm. on board. And they are using that solution very effectively. Okay. Yeah. So let's look at it practically. So when you log on to you obviously you're downloading an application onto your device, mm. right? So once you do that and you log in, what then are you required to do at the point of purchase or at the point of invoice? What are you required to do now that is different from what you would do before with the receipt that you get off of, uh, what was it? The old ETR. System, ETR, right? So what are you required to do now on e-teams as a vendor, for example? Me who is saying, I am selling handkerchiefs and this is what I require you to pay. What am I then required to do? And then let's go through that for the person who also is paying um, later. Okay. So, so uh, this depends on the solution you're actually on. Mm. Uh, because if you're looking at... Uh, for example, I talked about the online portal, and I, I mentioned that this is being used by those people who are who are specifically transacting in services. So we'd have our legal teams, we'd have our, our accountants working on the online portal. Mm. So what they need to do really, um, I mean, the first thing as you sign up, you need to register, mm -hmm. you need to say what you do, mm -hmm. so that we can allow you, we are not allowing everyone to use the online portal. Mm. So once we can verify and see that you are, you are sp strictly on services, then we allow you to get credentials from the system and then you can go to invoicing. Okay, what so are services? What, services, yes. uh, services, it means you don't have goods, uh, you don't have you're not moving any goods so your your business uh you're definition. a consultancy yeah con yeah consultancy okay. you are an accountant you don't have you're not selling tea mandazi you're not selling any goods mm. okay so that one um we allow you to onboard uh, that one why for because we, we are we actually reducing it's you know you're logging in directly to the KRA system mm -hmm. so we are system? yeah yeah the, uh, di directly to the KRA system mm. while it has a component of the stock management module uh we would not w like to load it with so much information because we'd like it to be used by the, s the ones who are transacting in services so that it, we can uh, maintain the system performance. Okay. So the ones who have goods now, we segregate them, we have them have the software installed on their devices because now they, they need to run, especially for VAT registered taxpayers, they need to maintain a stock, a, a stock record, the inventory control. Mm. So that one is it's more accommodating to them and it allows them to to feed in as much information as possible okay and where but is this okay. where are they now th on? these ones these ones are on e mm -hmm. they're on e teams directly the, the care system okay that now now if you're logging into e uh, basically if you need to to sign up for example you'd need to start from e teams at care.go.ke mm -hmm. so those ones are working directly on e okay. now there's the third category who, who the simplified solutions are very very uh simple for example they don't have the stock management module for those who don't have vat non-vat taxpayers and the smaller taxpayers we've said all we need to do is the sales management aspect of it so when they if you have credentials for e citizen for example many people have you've logged in there before maybe to do this and that you use the same credentials but then if you want to go to the kra services directly now it's e citizen dot kra dot geo dot k it takes you directly to the kra services you see the items uh, invoice 
first of all again you have to re uh, identify yourself so that it also checks from our database whether you even have business or not and then uh, you can generate your invoice it's a very simple uh, process that you go through uh, you, you need to enter pin for example you need to to enter the description of the supply you want to do the amount that is a, the, or the quantity uh, what you are supplying and then you enter if you want that invoice sent to that person you just enter the, uh, the email address and it can be sent directly you don't have to print it uh, the same platform maintains a record of all the su supplies that you've generated during that time if it sells you have the sales records you have the purchases anywhere where you've made a purchase and you've given your pin you'll always find it in your record so that when it comes to filing returns you already know the transactions that you have carried out to that time excuse me mm -hmm. you have so many platforms now Yes. Already there is the iTax platform. Uh, yes. And you? Mm -hmm. Now there's an e Teams platform. Mm -hmm. Then there's the e Citizen, Citizen platform. Then the U yes, there's the USSD platform. Yes. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter whatever platform I'm on, at some point I will need to file my returns mm. and I'll have to go to the iTax platform. Correct. Will I find all this information from all these other platforms here? Yes. So for the invoicing platform, what we've done, the back end, it's one. It's one database. What we've done is we've, we've tried to diversify so that we find the taxpayers where they are used to operating. So there are some who probably might never log into the e-citizen platform, but they are always on M-Pesa. They, they have their Kabambe phone. If you have your Kabambe, mm. you can do USSD. So, but it's all feeding in one database, the electronic invoicing database. And from that database, that information is being drawn and being used for, for, for return filing in mm. the iTax system. Why so many different platforms for different services and different people? Because of uh, what we are trying to do is diversify. What, what, what we tried to determine is do we draw the taxpayer from where they are used to operating and uh, this person, the only thing he does is receive money, send money, and then you are telling him come and log into a KRA system perhaps that uh, uh, they, they, they have to navigate through it, they have to learn it. But then they are also used to using the services that are on their phone through their mobile service provision. So why can't we borrow some of those services where they are used to doing their operations, they operate right there, but at the same time <coughs> give them an opportunity to comply. Mm. So that's why we are, we, are, we are actually really trying to diversify to make sure that uh, everyone has a chance, a, a, a simple way to be able to come on board so that there is no this complaint that uh, accessing the KRA website, for example, is too complex. We, we cannot make it. Mm -hmm. Everyone should be able to make it where they are. If you're used to logging into the e-citizen platform, then you already have credentials. Use the same credentials, generate an invoice. There's no complication of, uh, they say e is complicated because we have to approve on our end. The approval is actually an auto-approval. Uh, we just check the database, approve, and you continue with the invoice generation. You said that once you log on and you've registered and then you go to find if you then are, I want to use the word eligible, and you find that you're not there, what happens? You log off and just continue with your business? Or what happens? If you get on as somebody who supplies goods, for example, and somebody wants to buy from you and you want to generate one, two, three, and you find that you're not, the category for which you fall into is not there. Okay. You just go back to business? So, so, no, 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 no. What, what the system does also, it checks, first of all, if, you're, if you are registered, for example, if um, I enter my, my ID, and I have three companies I've registered already to draw that, that out. And maybe it's, it's asking you really which one do you want to generate an invoice for. Mm -hmm. But then there'll be a situation where I'm, I'm actually a new entrant and I really do need to generate this invoice or I'm making a one-off sale of something. Then you still have an opportunity to register and still generate an invoice. So it gives you that opportunity to actually still generate the invoice despite the fact that your business details are not there and maybe the system does not recognize it. Okay. Mm. Who is in this bracket? Um, um, I want to look at it from the point of view of KRA mm. where there's the hope that, you know, as many businesses and individuals who run business then are formalized. Mm. But we also know that the majority of those who run business are not in this system. Okay. So, so, so I'm going to, to still repeat. You have business income, you tick yes. You are resident, you tick yes. 
you are non-resident with permanent est establishment UTKs. Now you are you are in this category. Mm. However, um, when it comes to the 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 issue regarding taxation, because remember I've mentioned. ETIMS is not a tax. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I wanted to start with that today. Mm. Uh, it's just a source of information. But then when it comes to taxation, now the other tax uh, obligations apply. For example, uh, the provisions for individual income tax, by the time uh, you, you make an income up to 24,000 shillings per month, mm. you actually do not pay any tax. Mm. Uh, because by the time we do the tax calculations, you do the graduation, you have the relief all, all, all your tax is covered by the relief. Mm. So basically for, for, for someone with an income of let's say 288,000 mm. uh, per, per year, mm. then for tax purposes that person is, uh, is can we say silently exempt, basically mm. there's no tax to there's pay. There's no tax. Even if you make the declaration. Because because it comes down to less than 24,000. Yes, it will. A month. Mm. Yes. So you, you, there's no tax to pay. But now the provisions for items, it doesn't mean that when, when you're on items then you don't file your return. Okay, Hakamba. I guess yes. this is the question. Mm. The, and maybe I framed it wrongly, but here we are and we're saying that Okay, the kiosk in the estates, who you're hoping to get information from as KRA, mm. the person who has a fruit stall, fruit and vegetable stall, from what our understanding is, you want as many people in this information system as possible. How are you getting, if I'm going to buy a loaf of bread, for example, they don't, they're, they're not on it. <laughs> they're not recording this stuff on E-Teams, they're not there. Mm -hmm. So this is my question. Are we saying that for the people who we already know established that whom this is for, or is it truly trying to get the wider population who is informal into the system? Because what is it to then formalize and really just rein in on those who are already in the system? Like you said, you can find who you are because your previous engagement. But if it truly is for information on a wider level, there are hundreds of thousands of businesses that operate you know under the radar under the radar mm. basically I mean, let me just correct you there it's not hundreds or thousands it's millions mm. oh very well so, <laughs> okay so uh, basically what we have in our tax uh, our records people registered uh, with pin and uh, who are operating businesses we have 915000 mm. uh, such entities but uh, from the information that we receive, for example, from the KNBS, Kenya National uh, Bureau of Statistics, mm. those numbers could be as, 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 as big as 7 million uh, entities that are um, operating below the radar. Because, you know, once you don't have pain, basically, you, you, we can't see you. Yeah. Mm. So you are part of the informal sector. So part of the objectives that we are trying to do is to formalize the informal Just sector. To get people to, get yes. to register for pain. Yes. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, what our focus is, and you, ca you can see from January, has been on those who are especially for biz business to business uh, transactions. Mm. Because, you know, we have this huge elephant. We can't start eating the elephant from the tail. Mm. Uh, we have to focus on where there's revenue impact where for now. Meat. So, so um, it's open. It's open for all business entities, but our focus right now is for those ones who are facing other business entities for purposes of making sure that we lock this space and make sure that we close the gaps that when it comes to determination of the tax liability for various entities even the ones who have previously onboarded on teams or e teams we can have to we, we are able to close it because we can see their sales when it comes to their purchases uh, largely most of their purchases are coming from the informal sector and we'd like to know who these are that are con contributing to the purchases of these other entities Mm. Let's take a break. 29 minutes to 9. Hakamba Wangwe is the manager in charge of E-Teams at the Kenya Revenue Authority. She's here because there are very many questions surrounding E-Teams. The carry has put an end of March deadline for compliance with E-Teams. She'll tell us whether this one is still realistic or not. But also, we'll open up the phone lines at some point to hear your questions, your comments, your experience with E-Teams. Ask her. Tell her. I'm seeing very many of them already on mm. uh, social media, on YouTube, people saying, okay, somebody's asking, so am I like putting every daily ac sales ac and activities plus expenses? What am I, what information are you looking for? Come on. You'll answer all those questions. We'll be back shortly. Good morning. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.
You tune into Kenya's biggest conversation. My name is Raman Yan. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, one hour is over? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It gets over Can you imagine you in 20 minutes. What the big boys have also done. I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> When you understand about partnership in politics, it's like the way marriage is these days. When you're looking for a wife, you're like, oh, you know, maybe you can help me pay for fees as I pay for the rent. Why should you have a lioness living in your bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you a story. I went for a prayer meeting, which was called for the spouses yes. of candidates yes. for senators and governors. Mm. And when I got to the gate, the lady who was there, the secu- she refused to, she's telling me, no, no, no. Leo tunataka wa mama. Leo ni wa mama. I'm telling her, no, no, no. She said, no. Sio siku yenu. And I thought, there's a problem here. You know, because if it was a man, I would bet this was a lady. It will be called First Ladies until you change the name. <laughs> the Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. Cloudy conditions in Nairobi this morning. It's 18 degrees and we'll see highs of 28 in a sunny Nakuru at 19. It's sunny at 19 in Yeri, going to highs of 27 and we'll see highs of 26 in a sunny Eldoret currently at 17. All right, looking into Mombasa, the sun is up at 29 with highs of 34 and in Malindi at 30, it's sunny with highs of 34. We'll see lows of 27. Kizumu sunny at 24, highs of 30, and we'll see highs of 30 as well in a sunny Kakamega currently at 23. And looking into a partly sunny Kampala at 21, and a sunny Dar es Salaam at 26, going to highs of 33. Johannesburg is sunny at 14, going to highs of 23, and we'll see highs of 34 in a sunny Mogadishu, currently 31 degrees. It's 17 and sunny in Addis Ababa with highs of 22, we'll see lows of 12. Lagos is cloudy at 26 with highs of 33 and Kinshasa is 24 and partly sunny with highs of 34. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. On the thicker superhighway this morning, all the way into the city, that's busy. Juja Road, busy as well. Kiambu Road, we're still looking at some traffic coming in towards Muthaiga Square, reducing slightly, um, but folks are just getting where they're going, and that's staving off. Uh, all right, on Limuru Road, it's also busy, but there's this whole network of traffic coming in through towards Parklands Road, and then going on to Chiromo, coming in through Museum. All of that's happening, getting into the city. And on James Gishiro crossing over to Red Hill, not so terrible. Waiaki Way was very busy from early this morning, getting out towards Westlands now. No mean feat, but you'll do it, not to worry. Okay, so then on Gong Road, coming into the city, that looks all right. So we're keeping an eye on this as we come through. Langata Road is starting to build up now. Uh, going towards Rilo Dinga Way is busy. And on the Eastern Bypass, inbound traffic was heavy. That's relaxing some. And as you get towards outer ring inbound traffic was a thing still is just a tad keeping an eye on things this morning folks talk to us on spice fm ke on x hashtag the situation room mature intelligent talk every morning spice up yourself mornings done right 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. That's what we are having this morning. We've decided basically we're going to have a public service announcement for two hours. And uh, Kere will check this off. Put your Eatim's invoice for this, <laughs> for this particular one. 24 minutes to nine. Our guest this morning, Hakamba Wangwe, she is a senior manager. What, what is the title? Chief manager. Chief manager yeah. in charge of the electronics tax invoice management system at the Kenya Revenue Authority. We are getting to understand this uh, particular matter. Um, one question. Ask the carry lady. <laughs> so what happens with returns if they are missing costs? For example, you got a bust pipe and you brought in a guy to come and repair. Just a Lomo plumber, he didn't give you an E-Teams invoice and all those other costs that you have at the end of the year does that mean that you will not recognize those as my expenses yes um 
why why we went uh, all, all all out to have the simplified solutions it's scenarios like that mm. because if you're having a plumber for example it's something that, that needs to be sorted out today and the person comes and does the work of course they are not onboarded on on items they probably don't have been yeah and uh, you know that he's doing that work for a business entity Pre previously you would have a cash sale receipt mm. You would have. Mm. So uh, because you would have the cash sell receipt that you'd put in your record because when you're doing your income tax return, you'd need to bring in that expenditure so that you reduce your tax liability. Mm. So this plumber, as he does his work, probably it's exten extensive. You definitely need to add that to expenditure. Then you have an option to, to get to the USSD solution, for example. What that solution does is that once that, uh, that everyone has an ID at that point, once he enters, enters his ID and... Uh, uh, of course there's that check and he doesn't have pin it allows him to actually it it redirects him to register for pin within that space have a pin and also generate a tax invoice mm. so, uh, so he would need to do that so i'll tell plumber do the ussd is star 222 hash yes all right i know it yeah. because I've, I've i've tried it out mm. so go to star 222 hash mm. follow the prompts the prompts will make him register for a pin it will it will yeah. right there and then yeah. And then now he will generate an invoice. Right there and then. And he, I'll give him my pin so that he shows that he's yes. billing me. Yes. Unanipatia kazi mingi? Nani uyo? Where am I a plumber? Me, me. me who wants <laughs> to no, pay the plumber? No, but, but you see, uh, at, at, at the end of it, mm. you need to have a record of that transaction. You need to have that record. It's the same way that he'd have to do the cash sale receipt and capture your details. You'd have to give him your details. Okay. So this is a roundabout way of KRA getting people onto getting their pins. Why do I need to have the transaction? I think that's important that folks want to understand. Okay. Okay. Why is it important okay. for me to have a transaction that I paid the plumber to come fix something in my house? Why do okay. I need he, to have Here's that? how it works. Eh? We have uh, two, two major taxes that we can talk about. We have VAT. Yeah. VAT, whenever someone is filing their return, we talk about the output side of the VAT return where someone is declaring the sale. Mm. And then we have the input side of the VAT return where someone says, this is the expenses I incurred and was charged VAT in the course of my business. Yes. So the principles are like this. Uh, mm. As much as uh, people feel that the tax man is unfair, mm. what we do for VAT is we tell you, fine, you incurred these expenses and you charged this much VAT from the people who you made a sale to. Yeah. Can you give us the balance? You offset your, your expenses mm. so that any time in your course of your business we are saying you don't have to incur VAT in the process of you also uh, uh, collecting, collecting on VAT on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We tell you, just offset the expenses. What is the balance? Give us. If you're running a credit balance, no, don't worry. We'll continue running it like that. Yeah. At the point where you have something to, to, to pay, the credit balance will, will actually take care of that for mm. you. So for us to be able to ascertain this, we want to be sure that since this is in, uh, it's like an incentive you've been given, mm. then we want to, to make sure that the, the, the calculation of that incentive is accurate. So we don't want to also give you that, uh, that space and also experience gaps in that we have inflated input tax claims so that we end up losing revenue in the process. Mm. So that's VAT, income tax. Mm. Income tax, you declare your turnover, you declare your sales, and then you bring in your purchases or uh, or, or cost of, of cost of sales, yeah. basically. So the tax comes from again your profit. Net. But yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. From the profit is mm. where the tax calculation begins. Mm. But then we are also saying that uh, you can offset your expenses, so that uh, by the time you are you are determining your 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 profit profit, now we know from that profit is how much tax or tax liability is due. Mm. But for us to ascertain that you calculated the correct profit. We are checking both your sales, which is what you are transmitting to us, yeah. but any purchases that you have made, we need to make sure that they, they've been calculated accurately, and therefore it means the profit mm. is accurately so uh, determined. every expense, every I expense. need to document it. You need to document And previously I've, I was documenting those expenses with simple receipts, so I have a ca yes. ca cash payment voucher, mm. that plumber would have checked off there. Mm. Sign up uh, at in Makulipa 5,000 shillings. Mm. And then later in the year, I'd have said, well, I have incurred 100,000 shillings worth of uh, plumbing and other related expenses. Now, KRA is saying, I want to trust, I want to believe that that is true. Yes. By seeing who exactly you, you paid 
for plumbing jobs. And that is if the plumber had given me an invoice that is reflecting in your system. Now, now you're twisting for, for the <laughs> sake of <laughs> the taxpayer. <laughs> what we want to see from you mm. is that uh, the, 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 the expenses were actually incurred. Yeah, so we don't have fictitious expenses. For no, you it's to not know the that same they were actually thing. Incurred, now, on the other side, the plumber has to have told you, I was paid. I billed Eric. Mm -hmm. uh, truly, I, I did the service for Eric yes, and, and, and they I paid me. It. And therefore, for Eric, allow him this expenditure. Yeah, I can, but then I now, can on vouch. the other side, mm. on the other side of it, uh, we want to take an ideal situation where this plumber, fine, he gives you the, the, the receipt. And when he comes to filing his return, he'll also be able to have that as his as sales. An income. But in the event that this is a person who has been filing nil returns, and it has happened for VAT, yep. sure we are coming to that discussion, where you file nil returns, you forget that you issued invoices. So the system will just kindly remind you that, remember there was an invo invoice you gave to Eric, please declare that invoice. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so it's, go ahead. So it really is a check system. Yes. That's what it is, actually. Yes. It's to ensure that whatever it is that you are saying you did or did not earn can then be verified on E-teams. That's what it is. That is correct. Right? Yes. So, with what I am filing, I guess you can just jump that into that right now. With what I'm filing, and if you do then file nil returns, and someone has, no one rather, has put in an invoice or put in a receipt for payment that you may have paid or made, then your returns remain nil and then there will be no query from KRA, is it not? Yes, if there's no one who has put in a receipt or you, you yourself has not put in a receipt, mm -hmm. uh, then in that case, then uh, from the side of KRA, when you are filing your return, of course that trace might not be there. But remember, remember mm. the people you do business with neither can they claim their expenditure. Mm. So if it so happens that you're not issuing uh, tax invoices, then if you're doing business with, uh, and if, if for serious business uh, uh, entities, they would like to onboard because then the other person won't give you business because if I'm going to lose on tax. Because remember, if, for example, you do um, the, the transaction with the plumber and maybe he charges you 7,000 yeah. mm. and he himself does not give you an electronic tax invoice, neither does he file the return then that tax, your, your profit will go up because that tax is on you. Okay. You, you will not recognize that. Yeah, we will not, we will okay. not recognize it. Can we, let, let's, re, because, and, and for the purposes of many, many people who are listening this morning and own a small business and really do not understand what you're saying here. I own a salon. Let's just give an yep. example, okay? Mm. I own a salon. I have maybe five stations. I... I'm supplied with shampoo, conditioner, whatever, Malas. whatever. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> My God, I need to see you later. <laughs> and then I have employees, eight of them, whatever. Okay? But I'm supplied with all of these things. And then they even bring water. They bring me towels. What you're saying, essentially, is that for each of these things that I am supplied there must be the relevant documentation saying, yes, we brought um, shampoo. shampoo to Ndu Salon on the 16th of every month in the year 2024. We charged her 8,000 shillings. She paid us. And here is the record. And here is the record that she paid us. What you're asking is that as I am doing my reconciliations, it must be in the E-teams that, yes, actually, they brought me shampoo. I paid, here is the receipt, this is how it was done. They brought me nail stuff, here is the receipt, this is how it here's was done. Here is the invoice. Here is the invoice, mm. rather. They've invoiced me, I actually paid them. I also then issued, uh, they also then issued me uh, a receipt mm. for the payment that I have made. And then mm. Hakamba came to the salon. Yeah. Okay. On one and lowly Tuesday afternoon yeah. in March. And she did this, 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 the other, right? I billed her. Here is her invoice. Uh, here on. is my invoice to her. Mm -hmm. Let's make it practical, Eric. For it to be a sale, yeah. because you're a, you're a salon and you've now done Hakamba, mm. you need to bill. 
hang on. So Hakamba's come in, she's done her hair, yep. she's done her nails, she's yep. done her facial, mm. right? I have billed her 10,000 shillings. Hey, yes. What a nice salon this is. <laughs> I've billed her 10,000 shillings. That's cheap, is that a lot? Hey, she's done her hair, her nails and everything. And it's Hakamba. No, it's not, it's not enough. Okay. These KRA fellows so are 25K. So 25,000 shillings, she's okay. come for full service, everything that day, mm. right? You pay your 25,000 bob, okay? I give Hakamba an E-Teams an e -teams invoice, right? Yes, correct. At the end of your service, yes. here's your invoices of what you owe. You pay via M-Pesa cash, whatever, and then I issue you with a receipt. A receipt. Mm -hmm. All of that must be in the system. Now you, Hakamba, you've done your thing. You're going for lunch, you whatever. You don't put that information it, anywhere. I mean, goodness, I've done my hair. Is. I'm mm. going. Does that affect me in any way? Because I understand where it comes as the business because I have a pin, I can operate, whatever. I have to put all of these things in the, in the system. How does that um, affect me if you have come to my service, my salon, but then you don't put in this 25,000 bob that you spent on March 26th? Okay, if, if you see, uh, what happens is that uh, what you're taking care of is the expenses feeding into the, 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 the business. Mm. And you've seen this is a very good salon because they've uh, actually accounted for all, all, all the supplies, the mm. shampoo and everything. Mm. So they have receipts, items receipts for all those supplies. Yeah. Uh, as I come in, as Hakamba, I'm an end consumer. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not a business entity. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, I have nowhere to get that that um, reprieve because when you give me the receipt mm -hmm. uh, uh, from Ndu uh, Saloon, mm -hmm. if you give me the receipt, it ends there. You will not claim it. I, I, I cannot yeah. claim it. Yeah, okay. So you can imagine this incentive is only available to business entities. Mm. I wish we could, uh, as uh, uh, unemployment income, bring in also those expenses. You can't. Mm. Okay, let's change you it. Cannot. Let me ask you uh, this. Spice FM is but then, sending all their hold people on, to Before the we move on, yeah. is it a requirement that Ndu Salon mm. issues the ATIMS invoice to the end user? To the yes. end user. Yes, correct, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for I you have to, to register yeah, that yeah. as a sale. As a sale, yeah. you register it as a sale. You must mm. issue the e teams invoice mm. to Akamba. The only thing I, now, I the don't, question I that don't do, claim. If I understand your mm. question, uh, and I think, is how will I? Would, there'll be no reconciliation as long as I've generated an invoice for twenty five thousand shillings. Kerry considers that a sale. Yeah. Yes. Whether Akamba told me, "Ah, we jalin, we let to invoice, mm. it's in the kulipa, mm. pays or not." It's you, showing in the thing that's that a is sale. the sale. You, you see, because I must generate, generate it. The items. You see, if you're operating in a, in, a, in a situation where, of course, you trust me, I come uh, repeatedly and maybe I pay you at the end of the month after all the services, uh, for generation of invoices, it's, it's not based on the relationship of the business <laughs> entity. Carrie doesn't care if we're friends. Uh, uh, what, okay. what, <laughs> what happens is that uh, whether you've earned it or it's accrued, meaning you will get a payment at a later date, mm. then you generate the invoice. If it so happens that Hakamba, after that, a nice service of 25,000 moves on to another salon, because I'm going to pull that one again, then what you can do is you can now raise a credit note because you did not receive the amount that you had actually generated from the invoice. Okay. So, so basically, you're just looking at the traceability of that okay. transaction end to end. So if you're dealing with business, the same business, because it does happen, whereby you're then providing the, it, a service. The same salon is providing a service for Spice FM, people who come and do the show, whatever. We will do your hair every day. And then you bill us. We bill you at the end of the month to pay us. Does that change? Again, the expenses, remember, it's expenses that go towards furtherance of business. There's some businesses, I think, maybe if it's a modeling agency, I guess, mm -hmm. maybe expenses from, from a salon would, would hold. Okay. But uh, for, 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 for uh, an entity like yours, for example, if you are sent out in the field mm -hmm. and the, the employer says, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pay for your lunch mm -hmm. because you are, you've gone out to work, if you have your employees going out for lunch in such areas, uh, please ask them to get an ATIMS receipt mm. because when you're bringing it to your return and uh, bringing it as an expense towards uh, maintaining your employees when they are working, then you, they need to be ATIMS receipts. I want to ask about services. You said for those that are offering services and not necessarily selling goods, 
you have put them in the eteams.geo.ke and this would include accountants consultants like communications consultants such as ourselves you've put in doctors and such right now doctors came out with a statement the other day and they were like aha sasa kama shida ni kubwa hii Kenya inaanza kare I'm going to read some excerpts of this. It's a very long statement that they went on and on and on. And it was signed by the president of the Kenya Medical Association, Dr. Simon Kegondu. And what he was saying is that this requirement that a doctor, when I go to see a doctor in a doctor's uh, consultancy, mm. the doctor should bill me. There's the same way with Ndu Salon billing her, her uh, Billing Hakamba is the same way that Dr. Kigondu will bill Eric mm. for coming to see him. What details is Dr. Kigondu putting there in terms of, so what service did you offer? Is that saying that Dr. Kigondu is now going to be breaching doctor patient's confidentiality? When he starts ke telling KRA, Oh, unajua Eric amekuja kwangu mara tatu hii mwezi. Na nimempatia hii dawa na hii dawa na hii. Unajua hii dawa unajua ni ya kutreat nini? Si wewe unajua? Si wewe unajua? Is that breaching that confidentiality? Okay. And that's one of the questions that they're raising as doctor and saying, look, by by saying that we must do this, you are basically just going overboard. Okay. Uh, th that's a good concern honestly um with all of us uh, being patients in at one point or the other or future mm. patients it's something that we should all be concerned about and uh, maybe at this point to thank the doctors because what happened is that once they realized the implementation is coming uh, we ha we've had uh, good engagements with them because they have been interested in how the the eating solution is going to work for their sector uh, Maybe I, one clarification I'm going to make that on the ITIMS platform, the uh, doctors are largely on the online portal. However, you know that uh, most uh, medical facilities are coupled with the pharmacy. Mm. So you'll find that they might be on the client solutions or the, on the system-to-system -system integration. But for those who are just strictly like clinics and um, uh, maybe the, cli the, the pharmacy is the next, uh, next door which might not be related to them, mm. then they can be on the online platform. And uh, they can also use the simplified solutions depending on th on how big or how small they are. So um, to answer that, uh, basically what, what we normally do, I want to share something, mm. something I had to carry. Mm -hmm. I just want to give it to you and then you tell me where they've captured the details of the patient. What's that? Watch at one. So what is this? This is an items invoice. Uh, of course, you've blacked out Wait, the, details it was the, the details of the seller. Of the details of the seller. Yes. Because now, now here we'll have <laughs> the PIN and everything and the email of the seller and all. Yeah. Now, it says item code, it has a long one CG1BGVD0001. Item description diclofenac, quantity and price to, uh, by 316% uh, rate, amount exclusive of tax 517.24, tax amount 82.7 amount inclusive of tax 600 and then so there are three items here that have been sold diclofenac panadol and silver and each of them has its amount total amount 2000 there's an area where we have care pin mm -hmm. so care pin is up there right invoice to a so invoice number this okay on one yeah, side that's okay. yeah so there's an invoice number and then there's invoice to and these are the details of the of the patient the, the patient that, should be the details of and the what patient. is this that's the seller I will these, these are the details so that, of, uh, the, of the seller so that of the particular see medical their practitioner. Invoice, yeah, yeah. okay yeah so this is how it would look like yeah and then this is now the the items yeah and this is what now the doctor would be putting in or the pharmacist yes they would be, be putting in that in. but uh, but just coming back to where we have the care pin mm. and name now um you and i are going to medical facilities and uh, we basically uh, the, the same example of salons applies yeah and um, I, I don't have an intention of claiming it or putting it anywhere as an expenditure mm. you, where, what i'm trying to demonstrate there is that you you've seen care pin and name is actually not there 
mm. uh, but i was able to generate or the person was able to generate the invoice i see yeah so yeah it's this blank. is blank yeah it's blank so this is blank by design by design yes by design so that what we are interested in mm. is that information that is leads to determination of the tax liability okay not on the details of who sasa who ni nani ame ame are you saying that the doctor will not put these details in they don't have to you know uh, that's why i'm giving an example mm. we'll have this other person who will go to a medical facility mm. but definitely they would like to claim that expenditure in their income tax return okay now you see the identifier for any tax transaction is the pin mm. and for you to get that credit your pin needs to be to, to be captured so that we know that you did not just bring your whole family for treatment here yeah. and there or or maybe even your extended family yeah. and you are bringing all those into the uh, income tax return as your expenditure when it comes to medical uh, services mm. so <clears throat> when it comes to now this component of taxpayers who must capture their pin for purposes of their their own determination of the tax liability remember i have to offer to give you the pin mm. and because i'm offering then it's it's actually that i'm consenting so that my tax liability can go down mm. Mm. and in this case now what kicks in is this mm. when it comes to the issue of data protection the data protection act uh, is very huge on on the issue of confid confidentiality even for uh, authorized persons who by nature of their work might have access to this information mm. moving to the the kra acts the tax procedures act the kra officers in their course of business have access to information but then also are bound by the confidentiality clause mm. and you know we've been receiving once again this is items that someone is giving their own pin yeah but then they have been giving this uh, these receipts for purposes of reducing their medical lab uh, uh, expenditures yeah so you consent to give the information on our end we are bound by the confidentiality clause and you've not had us out there even without e teams talking about people's medical histories Yet you, are you saying you already have we, access we already have access to this information mm. so e teams is different because now it's it's transmitted i guess but okay. but we have access to this information okay. okay time for the news it's already 9 a.m uh time that's running really fast in the next hour we open the phone lines engage with hakamba wangwe she is the senior manager in charge chief chief <laughs> <laughs> chief manager in charge of e teams at the kenya revenue authority kra wants all of us to get onto e teams in one form or the other whether through the e teams.geo.ke through the e citizen platform they'll soon be launching the e teams app or through the ussd code star 222 hash are you prepared we'll pick your calls after this it's 9 a.m news time Good morning. This is the news wire. I'm La Ubaga. At least 10 people were killed in separate places following heavy rains that were experienced in Nairobi on Sunday night and Monday morning. The death toll is expected to rise as more families have reported their friends and kin are missing following the floods that were reported. Among those missing is police constable David Chesire of Kamkunji Police Station who was swept by water as he saved a trapped family in the area. Area. The Met Department has urged, where, has urged Kenyans to be wary of the rings, which will continue until early June. It is not just yesterday, I think even on uh, Saturday, if you notice there were rainfall reports in quite a number of places. It's going to continue. We expect a break on Thursday. And uh, after the break, on Friday, we expect some parts to pick up again and to continue. The father urged those living in landslide-prone regions to move to safer ground. I think now it's advisable for, for us to sow what we have. There is sufficient moisture to support growth. As we go into April, the peak month of the season, we expect the rainfall to be sufficient to support growth of crops in most parts of the country. More so given that we are expecting enhanced rainfall. 
President William Ruto has been asked to step in and address the ongoing doctor strike which has entered its second week. While lamenting that Kenyans are currently suffering as a result of the ongoing strike, Nyando MP Jared Okello said Kenya Kwanza government has refused to address the doctor's grievances. He has therefore petitioned the president to come out of his comfort and address the matter, arguing that those who had been sent on the negotiating table are all jokers who are not committed to finding a solution into the impasse. This event comes as Dr. Strike is on its second week with clinical officers set to join them. The most unfortunate thing about this is that we have given the government enough time. We have tried diplomacy. We have followed the law. We have gone to the Ministry of Labor. We did conciliation. It failed because the government was not committed. We went to court and even after they were summoned through an order of the court, they still refused to come to the table. You realize that the government did not even read the strike notice or understood it well because the, the, most of these meetings there's just a back and forth aspect into the issues. And I must say that the strike that we are on is government fuel strike because they failed in their obligations and in their previous commitments over the same issues that we brought up now. An Ibasha court has dismissed a suit by in Ndipithi Farmers Company that sought to access disputed land in Ndambimbi, Naivasha and block police from stopping a series of invasions. Naivasha Principal Magistrate Eunice Kelly noted that the court did not have jurisdiction on the suit as ownership of the disputed property was already determined by the High Court in 2023. This comes a couple weeks after several youths including top officials of the company were arrested for invading over 5,000 acres and destroying property worth millions of shillings and finally over 92,000 liters of Kangara and 10,000 liters of Changa were destroyed in various parts of Miguri County in a bid to rid the area of illicit brew menace speaking during a forum that brought together multi-agency stakeholders at the Miguri Teachers Training College Miguri County Commissioner David Gitonga said that so far 92 people have been arrested in connection with the illicit brew Gitonga also affirmed that over 30 wine and spirit outlets have been closed, including five pharmacies and three agro vets, as the fight takes shape in the county. This event comes as Interior Cabinet Secretary has said that more than 18,000 businesses have lost their licenses. We will continue crushing drug cartels, people who are selling poison to the people of Kenya. We will continue crushing them mercilessly. And we are not going to listen to any voice, any distraction. We will remain focused. That's the news wire. I'm Leah Obaga. Ninety four point four Spice FM, Nairobi. Okay, a few minutes after nine, what does it look like on the roads today? It was heavy on the Thicker Superhighway. It still is coming in from that junction of Outer Ring. And also, looking at traffic coming in from Waiaki Way, still a bit sticky for now. The CBD is where most of this action is happening. A whole beehive of activity here and there. Coming off Ngong Road, not too bad right now. And Lunga Lunga, there was that issue. Uh, enterprise let's not even talk about it because it's not a road um we'll maybe see how folks are getting through that traffic a little bit better later for now Jogo road a little bit of traffic right around the makadara train station getting towards landis it's heavy then on kamkunji out towards Haile selassie not too bad we'll keep an eye on it we're coming out of traffic hour not too far from now um let's talk on spice fm ke on x hashtag the situation room This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, 
Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. Seven up to nine, this is the, is the situation room, the yeah, only way. Hakamba Wangwe from the Kenya Revenue Authority talking about E-teams, opening up the phone line shortly, 0719-012-600. And also we'll be reading the questions and comments on YouTube, on Facebook, on X, on IG. And also we will tell you again that mm. tomorrow, Wednesday, if you'd like to go and see for yourself, with your own two eyes, the way KRA wants to see for itself, every <laughs> transaction that you claim to have made, it's very important. Just go to Kencom, 7.30, be there tomorrow morning. Mm. A bus will come. It will be labeled Username Investment. It will be written uh, Serenity Springs, Lanette. Mm. Hop onto that bus. It will take you to Nakuru, take you to Lanette, take you all the way to Serenity Springs. You will see the land. If you're in Nakuru, what's that mall called? West Side. West Side Mall. West Side. <laughs> it's West Side. Yes, it is. Okay. If you're at Westside Mall at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, mm. bus will come. It will take. It will take you. Mm. Hop onto the bus. Go. See for yourself Serenity Springs. You don't have to carry all the 1.499 million shillings tomorrow. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Just go there. You'll eat Nyamchoma. After that, take their contacts. Then you'll do the transactions thereafter. Mm -hmm. All they'll ask you for is 10%. Not tomorrow on site, but later. Pay a 10% down payment. And then you can clear the rest within 30 days. And if you can't within 30 days? Three months, mm -hmm. six months, mm -hmm. nine months, mm -hmm. 12 months. Have a conversation. Mambo hi Kenya ni ya kuongea. Yes. Hata kiare wanajua hivo. Pawa wanakuanga na watu ya kuongea. Ndiyo sababu. Na wewe. 0725-000-222. That's the number to call or WhatsApp them. And if you'd like to send a text to them, it's SMS the word. The one Lots. to 20321. Zero, three, yes. yes. You can also email them if you're outside the country, diaspora at username.co.ke. Again, today's proverb, courtesy of CT, who is sorting out his items, <laughs> it's from Mauritius. When the head is too big, it cannot dodge blows. When the head is too big, it cannot dodge blows. Mm. And Hakamba gave us our interpretation of this. Because Itims <laughs> is too big, it's not dodging <laughs> the blows. Okay, start throwing those blows. Edna will pick the calls, we'll put them on, on air, read some of the questions and comments. Mm, okay, so one question here. What about mileage claims? That's something for you to think about. Um, so that's how, do then that, how does then that come through? Mm. Okay, so we... we Okay, so there's a lot of innuendo here, but let's ask this question. How about telling us how we will account for bank charges, loan interest, provision of all allowable expenses for tax purposes, yet no invoices are raised? And this is for the ETIMS um, perspective. So we'll take those two. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. so so um mileage claims um I, I think maybe a clarification that i need to make we are, we are not changing anything about how you operate when it comes to mileage for example uh, the basis is actually the fuel consumption so what you've been doing before even with your employer mm. when it comes to now when you go to fuel for example you maintain records of uh, uh, of those uh, of those receipts then uh, you deal with your employer how you normally account for that and get your credit for that. Bank charges, let me just start with interest. Mm. Uh, interest uh, from uh, Tax Procedures Act, Section 23, interest is one of the transactions that are exempt, as you speak. Mm -hmm. So they have an exclusion. Others are emoluments. Uh, we have investment deductions. We have imports, and imports I'm going to qualify it because there's a bit of a lack of understanding there. Imports, when you're bringing in your, your goods, uh, services are, cl are clearer. When you're bringing in the goods, they go through the uh, customs or our borders, and uh, they go through what the, the basically the custom verification that happens mm. uh, through our custom system. Mm. Then we have captured that information, in which case you don't have to have an ITIMS receipt. So from the country of origin, 
you bring the goods which we, with whichever receipt or invoice that you received it okay. from because the record is at the port of entry mm. now for services of course we know the, uh, still the basis is the receipt would be the one which you received from the country uh, the country where you're importing the services from so for goods i'm coming back to goods again if you take this bottle get mm. it uh, at the border at that point you don't need an items receipt you'll have the receipt that you imported it with okay. once it crosses on this side and it forms part of your stock anytime mm. it's going out it needs an items receipt right. so don't uh, we shouldn't think that because the goods were imported then they will never need an items receipt it's at the point of importation Only so it's the there. transaction okay so um i think those ones are the examples i was giving of uh, the transactions that are actually exempt and interest is one of them mm. and it says with sim and similar payments now um from what we were looking forward to is having the the items regulations in mm. the tax procedures act so that we give clarification on because in the tax procedures act it says and similar payments remember we've covered interest mm. when it comes to uh, financial transactions mm. but then we said and similar payments mm. we wanted the public to see if bank charges would be part of what would be classified as similar payments for now if someone needs clarity for that you can actually get an official communication uh, from a policy division but uh, the best place would be from our regulations we are going to clarify that okay yeah let's go to the phone lines i've got several i'll start with rotich in mombasa and then zippy in nairobi rotich good morning good morning eric how are you very well thank you uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Hi. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Madam Akamba, for coming in to give us more info on these items uh, system. Now, uh, I've got like three questions, but uh, let me let me start with this. When you uh, when you log into the module, the items, and uh, you on the item management uh, part. When you are trying to 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 say maybe uh, generate an item code or uh, get an item code for a certain particular maybe service or uh, product uh, sold, you realize that as you go to those uh, in that uh, item management module, there's some um, there's what you've coded as level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. From there, you will get uh, the respective item code for a particular item that you've uh, you've uh, you've uh, you've sold. An example is something like furniture. You say supply or you sell some uh, furniture to some institution or some company. Well, now when you're generating that invoice, you you go to this uh, item management module and try to get that I, uh, item. Uh, code so that it will reflect in the invoice in the items invoice but you realize when you key in like a keyword like furniture it will take you to some uh, it, under those levels it will give you things like uh, uh, libra uh, library furniture classroom furniture and such it doesn't have maybe it doesn't have uh, things like uh, 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 office furniture uh, hospital or maybe hospital furniture those kind of things Another thing is when you, when it comes to services like car hire or uh, car leasing services, under those, under those, uh, under those uh, modules, uh, under those levels, there is no direct, a uh, uh, direct uh, code that takes you to car hire services. Suppose I've I've leased out a car or somebody has hired a car, I cannot directly key in like a uh, uh, generator code for car hire services and even if you hire when you okay maybe you picked up photo of the code simply because the other there's no the other code is not available mm. i decide to let, let me pick one out of the the way it has been uh, packaged in that item management module mm. you find that for you can't get for for a car you can't get something like uh, maybe a motor vehicle all you get is like uh, rolls, uh, buckets, drums, is it something like that? And the only, the only level so of example... So basically what you're what saying is that there are some missing codes. Yes, there are some missing inputs. codes because it's so very, very, very many inputs. Then uh, the second one, the last one. Let's, please, let's, please, let's please. go to the others. Zippy in Nairobi, good morning. 
Good morning. Yes. Um, first of all, thank you for taking uh, the time to explain to us, and kudos for taking such a monumental task on. However, the process has become rather frustrating for small business owners, not because we don't want to comply, but it's a tedious, time-consuming process, especially when you haven't tested it well. As you, as you are aware, so many back office issues, such as purchases being rejected when filing VAT happened for the past two months. And what happens is when we try to call to try and every individual, every individual case is separate, there are no answers to the calls, emails are not being got to, and at the last minute we're told to go back to manual filing, which then we have already filed earlier with the excess VAT, which affects our cash flow as small business, and you are very well aware that cash flow is really, really integral to our part mm. to conduct a small business. So I, what my suggestion is one, please, in advance, before the due date of the 19th, either check the system and make sure that all transactions can be captured. It's not the fault of the small business owner if an ETR unit is not transmitting to you. Yep. We can't go after our suppliers all the time. This, this system should have been checked beforehand. And secondly, just a last comment. Again, kudos, but please test the system before implementing it and let us know what we're supposed to do next month. We like to file by the 10th. We can't be waiting till the 19th or the 20th at the nth hour to file. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Zippy. Peter in Nairobi, and then we'll go to Dr. Simon Kigondu of uh, KMA. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, my, my concern is I'm using the Android app, mm -hmm. and I'm gone through that tedious process of item codes which they think they should uh, revisit and rework it but now when it comes to printing out the, the invoice from the from uh, uh, a friend of mine they could do it on their laptop but on android devices i can't save it as pdf it's something from an iit company something that should be part of the system already what does it save us it's, it's forcing me to now buy, buy a Bluetooth printer uh, so that we can print it. I'm able to print, okay. but I, why not save it as PDF and print it somewhere else? Yeah, that's okay. my, my concern. Okay, good one. Thank you. Dr. Simon Kigondu, President of the Kenya Medical Association. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Latif and Du, and say a big hi to my friend Akamba. Morning, Simon. Amesa Limika. <laughs> so, uh, two things. Uh, I thank Hakamba for the many meetings we've had with KRA, but I can assure you that eating for doctors, we are not boarding, and we gave them a simple, simple uh, solution. Exempt doctors uh, invoicing from eating. Why? And, uh, it's because of, because of all the problems you've already had, one, but two, there are two problems that you have with that invoicing. KRA want to run your clinic using the ETIM system, and their ETIM system is inefficient. That's one. Number two, mm. the point of the tax point, the point of invoicing. Me, Kigondu, I see Eric Lati there. Yeah. Maybe he has a torsion. We need to remove his testes or mm. something. Mm. Sorry for the example. Uh, the invoice will read mm. Eric Lati. Uh, uh, the service is removal of testes, mm. and the amount is 1,000 shillings. Mm. And if you put it in an eating system, mm. uh, KRA will owe you 300 shillings whether or not you are paid. In another, in, in the past uh, arrangement where we've had, uh, for instance, an insurance is paying for you the 1,000 shillings, mm. the the invoice will be that will have all those details by the way an invoice an insurance company cannot pay a dummy patient yeah. and therefore it will go straight to the insurance yeah. the insurance one may refuse to pay mm. say that uh, that uh, 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 procedure is not covered and if they refuse to pay and you have put the, uh, that uh, thing already in the eating system you you already owe KRA. so when we talk to the team at KRA and ask them when an insurance doesn't pay you what happens? They say, oh, you pay fast, then you go and prove Dr. that you... Why, yeah. why, would, why would the insurance not pay? In 40% of doctors' bills are unpaid. Let's start with NHIF. Why? NHIF owe doctors 
They just don't pay. Why? They, they just don't pay. Why? They just don't pay. Even as you are, in fact, it is the duty of the government. And, 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 and the problem with, we are having is that that same government that has refused to facilitate doctors to collect their money is the same one that wants doctors to pay a uh, tax before being paid. Let me give you a good example. Resolution Health collapsed with millions of doctor shillings. We, we, it went. They have agreed. The patient has been treated. They have gone home. We have provided UHC. We have invoiced. Resolution have agreed and said, yes, we will pay. Then they collapsed. We sent to government. Government did not, is not able to refund all this. Secondly, okay. NHIF have refused to pay. And if you had put these invoices in ETIM, mm. then you are the provider. Right. You are government. Yeah. Then, but so it is not refused to pay. It's they have the failed to pay. Important. Hold on, Dr. Ari. Because yeah. you know when you say they've refused to pay, it would sound no, like oh, there's sorry. something Let's erroneous use, with your claim. Yes, yes, yes. Let's not use... No, 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 no. Claims are fine. Claims are fine. Okay. Rural uh, private roofer are owed 29... No, rural KAPH and all those are owed 29 million. It's mm. not that the claims have a problem, but now more important, the breach of confidentiality. When uh, the uh, KRA team says that, there is no personal information in that invoice. It's wrong. A PIN number can trace you direct to your house. Mm. And in the invoice, if you look at what an ETIM invoice contains, I put it up yesterday in my page. Can I read it for you? Yeah. It has a description of the services. In medicine, a description of the services is gonorrhea and things like that. Okay. In a PIN number is identified to do you a name. And finally, let uh, uh, your, your host tell you, we actually went to 17th floor of KRA and asked them, okay, let's see how this works. And they clicked. And the first thing that comes is name. And the second one is the type of and gonorrhea. And then, and so they should not be. <laughs> let them exempt doctors. We, are act we have actually filed a Dr. court case yesterday. We filed a court case because mm. after four meetings, we saw that, yes, we are happy KRA are trying to uh, expand the tax base, but... A breach will even lead to foreigners not coming to Kenya because the EU laws do not allow uh, personal information to be put in uh, eating system. So when you have KRA discussing a patient confidentiality, it's the doctor who, by Data Protection Act, will be charged five million, and if it's an EU court, it will charge you one billion. Mm. So let them exempt doctors from eating. So we have just to be, right to be clear, doctor. Yeah. If you go to a doctor and there's a gonorrhea issue, yes, my insurer and NHIF are going to have this gonorrhea information. Yes, they have. And why? Yeah. Because you have signed uh, an agreement with the insurer right. that the doctor, uh, the doctor can give this information for the purposes of payment. Why? Okay. Fraud is where people generate invoices of fictitious diseases. Does, the, does you, the doctor protection law yes. give KRA some uh, access and limitations to information about me? No, they would need to sign with all patients. Okay. Because, so what we'll do, if, if, they, if they do not exempt doctors from this is what we will do. Mm. We will be charging the patient and telling the patient to go claim from the insurer so that the insurer is the one who has the, um, how do you put it, liability. Okay. It would be me to be that the information of Eric Latif about us removing his testes, for instance, being discussed <laughs> at KRA has come from Dr. Kigondo because he's the only person we saw. <laughs> you see, and, 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 and let me tell you, KRA should be very careful. The practice of medicine is based on confidentiality, and it's based on the doctor keeping that information. They can't just say, and, and, and what is this emergency about tax? Doctors are the highest payers of tax. The can, I, can I ask you, doctor, because we are about to go into a break? Yeah. Okay. For anybody who's yeah. listening to you and feeling, okay, these doctors have uh, yeah. been, you know, come to Dr. Kigondo's clinic, yeah. Yeah. Uh, get treated for whatever thing I have. Yeah. I pay him, yeah. not even through insurance. Yeah. Yeah. I walk away. 
Dr. Kigondo yeah. does not declare this as an income at all. And now he's being we caught out. We always declare. He's we being always caught out. Declare. And, and now he's being told yeah. declare. And he's like, ah, no yeah. way. Confidentiality. Oh, Eric Latif, that secret, would be fantastic. That would be very fantastic. If that is the basis, eh? mm. if that is the basis for which you are saying, okay, e teams is that, that is fantastic. 95% of patients in Kenya who have been made poor by the current state of economy do not pay cash. 95% of uh, medical patients pay via some form of insurance. So that, that problem you are trying to use. Yeah, you'll use more money trying to get that 1% of Dr. Kigondu, but 95% of the insurance. And that is the problem. And then when you use that insurance, 40% of these claims are not paid. And if they are paid, they are paid next year. And if they are paid at all, I have uh, invoices from people I have seen from 2007. And if I had put it in an e system of KRA, I would have paid, I would be the government. You and the rest of us who are health. spending bills, same WhatsApp. Dr. Yes. thank you. After Your that, questions have been heard. Yeah. The Hakemba will respond to these questions. We've got to go into this break uh, right now, and then we come back and pick uh, more calls. Hakamba Wangwe is the chief manager in charge of e that's Electronics Tax Invoicing Management System at the Kenya Revenue Authority. We are, you know, just bringing the questions to her and ranting, like you've heard. Doctors are saying, we are not boarding. Mm -hmm. Who else? You'll respond to that after this break. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day. The sun is up at 20 in Nairobi. We'll see highs of 27 and highs of 28 and a sunny Nakuru at 21. 21 and sunny in Yeri with highs of 27 and we'll see highs of 26 in a sunny Eldoret at 21. Mostly sunny at 31 in Mombasa with highs of 34. While in Malindi, it's sunny at 31 going to highs of 34. Kisumu is sunny at 26 while Kakamega is sunny at 25. Partly sunny conditions at 23 in Kampala while in Dar es Salaam it's sunny at 28. At 17 degrees and sunny conditions in Johannesburg, while at 32, Mogadishu is sunny. Addis Ababa at 18 is partly sunny. Looking into a cloudy Lagos at 27 and a partly sunny Kinshasa at 24. Tuesday afternoon is 16 and sunny in Beijing, while in Paris it's 9 degrees and the rain still coming down. London is cloudy at 8, while Monday night still 4 degrees and clear. New York coming into Tuesday, highs of 9 and lows of 4. All right, it's still been a busy morning. It's been a busy morning for most parts of this Tuesday. Lunga Lunga still busy. That whole issue coming off Likoni Road and then going out towards um, parts of Mombasa Road still continues. Um, coming off a thicker superhighway, less dramatic as you come through survey and also looking at less traffic on Kiambu Road. So this is good. We're getting out of traffic hour in fine form. Let's keep an eye on things. The city still remains a beehive of activity. So just so you know, you may not get out as quickly as you expect but it'll happen in good time let's keep an eye on things through the day help us out as we talk on spice fm ke on x mature intelligent talk every morning spice up yourself Right. Like 94.4 Spice FM, oh, Nairobi. Respond to the ones that we had earlier. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I didn't get the name of the first person who asked uh, the question. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I missed that. Mm. But uh, also just to commend him because it, that is someone who is using the system. Rotich in Mombasa. Rotich in Mombasa. Thank mm. you for using the system. I can see you actually using the system and was able to identify where you, you felt that were, were gaps. Yes. We had some item classification that was not uh, very comprehensive. Uh, what we are using is the UN classification of item code for purposes of identifying the various items and their tax rates. Now, what we had done initially because of limitations uh, that we had when it came with re on resources, we did not have the comprehensive version 
of the UN classification code mm. but now we've subscribed to that version and we should be I was actually trying to find out when it was being updated but we should be having the updated one which uh, should take you to to as close as possible or or uh, actually accurate to the closest point of the items that you're actually supplying so we should be expecting a change maybe in the course of the week because we had that this subscription done mm. uh, last week for Zippy, I think she's talking about the VAT auto-populated return, which yep. we've not talked about uh, during this uh, setting, so allow me to, to give a bit of clarification. Mm. First of all, I'm starting from the point of saying that the system worked very well. The VAT simplified return actually did work very well. The issues that came out is the issues that existed, but we were not visible to them. So why those are huge outcry because those were the issues that were in existence out there that probably may have affected the tax li liabilities in one way or the other. What issues are these? So I was coming to, I was going to come to that. Mm. So uh, over time what we've, we've we've always reminded our taxpayers through various ta uh, uh, public notices through various email communication is one you're onboarded on ETIMS. This is for VAT registered taxpayers uh, because we started this implementation earlier with them. Mm. So we said, once you're on board, and uh, this is a message that will also go to the ones who are onboarding on ETIMS, it is not enough to onboard. You need to transmit your invoices through the system. So we started having this message, kind of message, from June last year that everyone needs to transmit their invoices to KRA through the system. How is that? What do you mean? How do you transmit this, the invoice? You generate, you need to be connected to the internet. Okay. So yeah. you make sure that the invoices are actually coming to our end. And we also have continuously, you'll, you'll notice the past public notices we've had, even if they're on an unrelated issue concerning items, we'd always say we'd wish to remind registered taxpayers to continue uh, generating invoices through the system and make sure that you give your PIN if you intend to claim input tax. You can okay. go back. So you may need to explain what that means. Okay. Okay. And maybe that's part of the reason there's, why there's been there's low, been a, slow compliance. It's yeah. just not understanding. Mm. If I, we are assuming somebody who has a handheld gadget, mm. those physical gadgets. Mm. Okay. So somebody goes and keys in the details mm. of the tax invoice that they're generating. Previously, with the other uh, ETRs, you do that and then that was it. Now you're saying that once you generate this, you should be generating this while you're connected to, to Wi-Fi. The inter to, to the to internet. Wi -Fi. Oh, at some point in the day, you know you might not be on Wi-Fi all okay. the time, but you need to, at some to point connect in and the transmit. Day, connect and make sure that it transmits. Yes. And then that is the only time that now you will be able to make your claims for it. Basically what, what a valid tax invoice is, is the one that is validated and transmitted okay validated and transmitted so now if you even if you on board and you switch off internet and you're generating invoices because they, they, they all have offline capability mm. as long as you're not transmitting then that is not a valid tax invoice mm. and that's why we provided uh, measures to check the validity of the invoice uh, what you do even as an end consumer you visit an, a premises you try to scan the qr code or you you check the invoice number through the itax portal it should show you that this invoice has been transmitted okay. so there are many entities that up to this point they had not complied to that mm. the other thing that was coming up is um, you then you've heard from Rotich that there's the classification of the items even in teams it's there and you need to have proper classification for general rated mm. for exempt for zero rate mm -hmm. so for exempt and zero rate there's a particular item code that you need to quote to say whether a, this item is zero rated or exempt now these two the tax rate is, we'd say zero, let's say zero, even for exempt. But the tax treatment of the two is different. For zero rated, what happens is that it comes with it an incentive that if you have a zero rated supply, you can claim input tax on those supplies. So if you incur VAT, you can claim input tax. So that's why we've separated them. But then at device level, now when it comes to the system, what taxpayers went and did, combined the two when it came to their inventory so that zero and 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 exempt are in one one list so mm -hmm. what happens it's transmitted and uh, because that i said the system worked well it all goes to zero rated and then they come back uh, hang on uh, how come all my zero rated and exempt are in one but you did not separate them but um 
just to, to just keep the long story short, maybe even for generation of credit notes, uh, the law allows credit notes up to six months. But then uh, when it comes to implementation, because what we did is give requirements and we expected that taxpayers would ad adopt these requirements so that you comply with the tax law. But if there's somewhere where in one re for one reason or the other the, the tax requirements were not met, then the validation in the system will not accept that. So for the issue of not capturing by a PIN, what we experienced was that oh, it was in two areas where you visit, uh, uh, you, you are buying something from another supplier you either don't give your pin and that affected many people or from the supplier point of view now this is a, a, a bit complex the person who is supplying to you when it came to his own configuration of the system as much as we gave the, uh, the requirements and mm. said capture pin here we have a template pin goes here you saw that the, the receipt I showed you yeah. item goes here and uh, the tax amount goes here, someone goes and interchanges and probably maybe just puts PIN somewhere. When it comes to transmission, what happens, the PIN is not picked by the system uh. because it's not where it was supposed to be found. Mm. Okay. It's not picked. So what happens now when it comes to the autopopulated return, these other people you sold to can't find their purchases. Because of erroneous placement? Yes. Okay. Can't find their purchases. So Zippy was, was inconvenienced and you can hear from her voice. Yeah. But because of issues that happened here and there. Towards the end of that day, we really needed taxpayers to file their returns. The outcry was huge, largely because of something that happened on the trader side that was not addressed, either for, for them themselves, but for Zippy, you can see the person she bought from did not uh, comply Sounds with the sweet. requirements and Zippy was inconvenienced. Can I ask how long it takes for KRA to rectify something like that? Because obviously you've seen an erroneous placement, then would mean that um, one is unable then to manage their their returns essentially one mm. would have to wait easily two to three weeks before KRA will come back to you and say okay now everything is is fine go ahead uh, what's the process of rectifying okay. that erroneous transaction or that erroneous information okay so so maybe what I need to clarify again when you're looking at such an implementation look at it from the perspective of what KRA needs to do also look at what the the taxpayer themselves for example issuing giving your buyer pin so that it's captured it's the taxpayer responsibility mm. when it comes to now the system is configured well depends if the taxpayer did the configuration themselves it might be the taxpayer's responsibility to correct that mm. but then it might be also the third party vendor who may have made a mistake in the configuration uh, and they need to correct those devices now, how so do KRA, I know? Just wait. KRA's responsibility is to pick the such issues so that now when it comes especially to vendor issues or taxpayer issues, we are able to point out to them and we have done that. For example, for the vendors, yeah. we actually picked the issues of ZP and many such. Mm. We looked at the vendors who largely had, uh, were being reported mm. and we, we, we zeroed in on seven of them. And we gave them a list of the, the complaints that we have received, we have given them timelines to correct that, and it is our responsibility to, to make sure that that is done, and so that the next time we switch on the system, then the taxpayers are not inconvenienced the way they were inconvenienced. This if time. it lapses in terms of time, and she's oh, supposed to be filing anybody is supposed to be filing and it's this what happens is, so, she, is is the person penalized because they've missed the date knowing full well that what we are waiting for is this regularization okay. so so uh, may, maybe what i need to clarify also for credit notes and in, and uh, for purchases any taxpayer the law still allows them six months to claim input tax or to declare a credit note so there's six months period by law and it's so how we've implemented it in the system but still when it comes to return filing one, the return filing, for example, for VAT needs to be done by 20th. If someone, for one reason or the other, should require an extension to file their return, then they can make an application, give but a justification. If, if in this case, this reason is because of this erroneous information that at this point we're waiting for KRA to regularize before then I can now have my complete basket, which I then file. So, so, um, what happens in this case? Because it is not me. I'm ready. Again, still coming back to 
we have six <laughs> months to mm. claim input tax <laughs> and credit not still six months. Mm. But bottom line, uh, KRA is going to take responsibility to make sure all the players do the right thing, including uh, the compliance checks and enforcement. But at the end of it, each in, in fact, when you look at the, the regulations uh, for VAT, electronic tax invoicing, the responsibility is placed squarely on the user of the register to make sure that it is working well, to make sure that it is transmitting well. KRA being the, the, the regulatory body will oversee, will provide oversight for this process. But at the end of the day, each individual taxpayer needs to take responsibility so that the whole ecosystem works well. So we had to switch it off, yes, mm. at, at last minute as ZP said. And uh, what we are doing is that, uh, we remember I've said we've reached out is even for the ETR support Players. We are also looking forward to the taxpayers. Once again, we are reminding all taxpayers, transmit your invoices. Where you need to claim input tax, give your buyer PIN. We will be back, but these measures need to be in place because when you switch it on, once again, the validations will be the same in line with the provisions of the law. Mm. Oh, sorry. Oh, that, that was the second question. Yes. <laughs> now, let's I go forgot the, I had more. Let's go to the doctors. <laughs> so we have Peter. No, we haven't finished with Peter. Oh, yeah. So he has the Android uh, device. Mm -hmm. uh, the Android device, uh, even for, for, for this phone, there's a limitation. When you have the, the solution on the phone, it means really that when you have to print, of course, you have to connect it to printer. The issue of it uh, saving in PDF, it's an issue that we've carried along with us mm. and a process of enhancement that needs to be done so that it can do that. But for the time being, yes, it needs to be connected to a Bluetooth printer. He mentioned about the item code, which I think I've responded. Mm. that it's it's in it's it's being uh, uh, enhanced so that we have more items featuring okay now i go to my before, friend before okay, the doctor is yeah. the android and laptop then where if it's the 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 app is loaded and verified on this particular device it can only be this device because the the software is loaded on that device yeah. it's like when you download an app uh, when you download an app, uh, if you have more than one phone, mm. the app will be on the phone which you downloaded, downloaded the app. Okay. Yeah. Is that not an inconvenience in some way? Because, so, uh, a, a taxpayer has downloaded the app. Let's say they even came with a laptop and you, you downloaded it on that particular laptop. Because I've had also some cases where they're saying this is the only laptop that can transact with KRA. <laughs> If it crashes, it means that this person has to go back all the way to carry a queue with their new gadget for them to be configured in another gadget. Okay, so, so the issue about uh, reporting to carry uh, to carry is uh, is because once the software is installed on your on your system, you have a carry system in your in your own devices. Uh, we have incidences where uh, suddenly the laptops or the tablets are crashing a lot or getting stolen a, a lot and the fires are also a, a lot yep. but uh, the provision that we have given if you don't have access to your system again according to the regulations you must report you must report because in the period you don't have access to your system then it might imply a revenue loss on our end so the reporting is why you have to come back to carry but you can also send an email however when it comes to reinstallation once you have uh, if you have technical know-how most taxpayers prefer to come back but if you have technical know-how you can be guided on how to do the reinstallation what's so complex and about this thing why can't it just be like an app go somewhere find the app download go ahead or just use an, uh, the online system. We, we, we Why a, must I have an app okay. on a specific gadget? The, there's an establishment of trust. Eh? Uh, and even in this filing period for VAT, you'll be surprised at how many taxpayers came to us and denied their own sales and said, absolutely, I'm not the one who generated this cell. So that initialization <laughs> process is so that we also have that, it links you to that device so that at the time you are denying we can actually be able to tell you there's a reason why we know for a fact you are the one who generated these invoices. So coming to the security features that actually go with that app. That's why it has to be installed on that particular uh, device. But then I need to qualify that also. For people who have branches, yes, the software might be on one 
device but then you have branches from that one software we can actually create branch, uh, branches where it can be used on several uh, other uh, uh, outlets so that you can actually use the same software in multiple uh, versions of it and all those so. gadgets must be brought to carry the, the, the one that has the software, what I'm saying is that the taxpayers actually normally prefer to come back. But if someone can be guided to do the installation themselves, they don't have to come. Are you sure they prefer to come back? Or we've, are they finding themselves had, having know, to come back? I, I, I mean, know, it's a like, cost of compliance. Yes. This is times that somebody mm. is spending going to a carry office out of their busy business as a small SME. And they're spending time queuing, waiting for their gadget to be installed, this thing, and then they go away and... Yeah, it's, we've had. It's, it's a cost. Yeah, it is. But we've had some who've been able to. First of all, we've provided the information on the carrier website. Those ones who can be guided because you need to to you see like the way you download the software and then you need to find it and install it. They just need to be guided how to do that. But they they should be able to do it on their own. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Doctors. Now doctors. Uh, Dr. Kingondu, King King mm. uh, thank you again uh, for, for reaching out. He's been very active in this uh, front. I explained about the, the issue about the capture of details, and I still reiterate. The details, first of all, when it comes to the description, especially when you look at the... Um, what is this? The simplified uh, solutions. We took them through, and Kigondu was there. Mm. We took them through. We did our walked through the de device, and they were able to see. When it comes to description, it is you. Yeah, I don't know what disease he said he was healing mm. from you, but it is you who enters what details need to be entered in the device as a doctor. It is not KRA saying, "Hey, you need to give me give me details of that uh, that uh, procedure that was done." Mm. The only thing that I failed to do, actually, yesterday, what I was trying to do is bring you uh, a list of the the list of taxpayers or the doctors who've onboarded. And by the way, right now we have like over 500 and a few major hospitals in Nairobi. Mm. So. What I was looking at is really confirming the conf concern that we have about confidentiality. And I was looking at the item description. Most of them have captured medical services, for example. Medical services, lab, uh, lab services, because as I mentioned earlier, our main concern is the, uh, the information that is going to lead to that determination of your ta taxable uh, liability. Mm. So we are not really in interested to know, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we just want to know that what, what she paid actually is, uh, is, is being accounted for by that clinic when it comes to their liability. So I'm still going to maintain, I know Simon is going to dispute, but I'm, I'm trying to still explain mm. that the information that we capture is gen generic. What we are interested in is what is going to go to determination of tax liability. So and this even is what you are telling the doctors. I'm still repeating do that, not, yes. You do not have to put the details like they do, because he's saying, this is what we are used to this will be when we are doing because we we have been dealing with insurance companies and for insurance companies i have to go into great detail, detail of this is the reason this is what i did with this patient and this is how much it costs for the insurance company to basically look and see can we confirm that this is co corresponding you're saying for carry you can just we, write medical we, services. We don't, we don't need the, the details. What, what, what happens also is that mm. even as they're going to the insurance, because what they were explaining was that when they generate the invoice, it's part of the documents that go to insurance and the invoice needs to be detailed. For carry purpose, purposes, we said generic information. The file will contain the details and maybe the claim form, I, I, the other documents that they, they attach will contain the line-by-line -line details of whatever these uh, medical services meant for purposes of claiming in insurance. And we are saying also that we are not changing how of uh, like doctors for example operate we are not going to change that we are not going to be suddenly interested in the details we are not doctors of what someone is being treated for but we are asking how much were you paid and was your tax uh, accounted correctly that's all we are asking for and if the concern is uh, for confidentiality how do we have over 500 as i checked last week over 500 medical facilities on board and I've, i'm going to mention three major hospitals in nairobi are already on board 
how have they circumvented that? I've seen their invoices they are transmitting, and I can assure you the issue of data confidentiality has been addressed, and they have not di di disclosed what they are treating from those patients. Where they need to capture PIN, I have mentioned, the person who needs to claim the medical expenditure is the one who is going to offer their PIN. Mm. Otherwise, they, you could feel that maybe I don't want to disclose this, maybe my next of kin don't know that I'm going through this mm -hmm. for one reason or the other, in which case it may not feature in your income tax return. So uh, it's, it's just the clarity that I need to, to provide that the issue of confidentiality is addressed mm -hmm. and the reason why most of the doctors now have onboarded. Okay. But the point of invoicing, the issue about, uh, um, I think there's a concern, and I think you, you really talked about it, about uh, th them treating someone and then uh, they raise the invoice, but at point of insurance, either they are paid partially or they are not paid at all. Now, for, for us, when it comes to determination of tax liability, it's coming from the point of either income earned or income accrued. Mm. In the, in the case where someone has not paid you and it goes to insurance and maybe for one reason or the other, they did not agree to pay the whole amount. You can reverse that amount and the provisions are in the system to be able to reverse. You account for only the taxes that are due from you. And that provision is there. So um, maybe the other administrative issues I think they would have to pick with is why insurance or NHIF is taking too long to pay them because now that won't be within my scope to talk about. There might be other reasons on the other end, mm. but we're just explaining for KRA, you account for the invoice is a record of transaction. It's actually saying this transaction was completed and this is how much it was worth, whether you are paid or not. Mm. But then at the point where you realize that this payment is not coming through and it happens in the medical field, sometimes someone doesn't make it and they can't pay. There's nothing much that can be done yeah. and therefore there's provision to reverse that that supply and no issue from us because such things happen mm. okay does it also apply to other businesses where you have built you've issued an invoice but then your client takes forever and a day to pay Yes, uh, actually, in fact, uh, when we are talking about these provisions, I'm not talking about the doctors alone. Mm. These provisions are there across board, so we are not discriminating against others that these provisions are not So there. in the case of pending bills, you issued an invoice to county government, national government, whoever, and you've gone six months, nine months, 12 months, you still haven't been paid. You see, as far as KRA is concerned, I recorded a sale yeah. 12 months ago. But and I've received it or not, yes, but, uh, mm. and in that sale there was some uh, there was some VAT, and I was supposed to remit the VAT on the twentieth of the next month. So what happens in this case? The tax point st still applies, especially for VAT, because VAT is whatever that comes earlier. You've rendered the service. <laughs> have you rendered the service? <laughs> Even if you've not done the invoice, you have raised the invoice or but you've not rendered the service, but mm. the invoice is out. Mm. Or you've received payment, but you've not done the service, you've not raised the invoice. Whichever comes Whichever earlier. comes earlier. Whichever comes earlier. Where? Okay. Time for one more question, actually. But let's, let's pick the ones in social media. There are very many. Yeah, there are quite some. Okay. Mm. So, um, while was asking, can you put two vac uh, two-factor authentication to verify users on, on any device instead of requiring that a specific device must be used there must be technical ways around this yep um, so why is removal from special tables such a headache even after registering on e teams two months later I still cannot file my VAT we can take those Okay, yeah. Thank you. So the issue of two-factor authentication, maybe the clarification I need to make, uh, the solutions that we have are actually uh, according to how, uh, can we say, superior or inferior, I don't know which word to use, mm. uh, because the ones who are on system-to-system -system integration, for example, they are more flexible with their solutions. They can have more than one user using. They can give, uh, like the way they're they, 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 they saying, give uh, passwords to various users so that uh, at different points someone can be able to 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 use that solution and uh, maybe one ERP can be used maybe across the country. But then here, when we talk about the solutions that we have, like the client solution, really it was aimed at a small taxpayer. Mm. So if you have a taxpayer who is more advanced, they probably need a more advanced solution that they also don't 
minimize the space they have when it comes to their efficiency because we've, they've limited themselves to a solution that uh, probably a small taxpayer should be using. Mm. So each solution has its own limitations and those ones on the system to system integration, they'll find that they are having a better experience, more flexibility in what they want to do and basically more efficiency in their operations. Now, removal from special table. First of all, um, this is uh, an enforcement measure. Whenever, I don't know, whenever someone, uh, for example, is uh, non-compliant when it comes to filing their taxes, someone has not been uh, transmitting invoices, is a uh, non-filer or non-filer for an extended period of time, it's a, it's a restriction. Basically, what we are doing is drawing out that taxpayer to, if that person doesn't exist, and we've had people on the special table for the longest time not complaining, not do anything, mm. the next consideration would be like, okay, so do we disable these pins? Mm. Because this person does not exist. But definitely this person exists. Uh, when they come forward, that person exists. And what the stations would be doing now that uh, the tax stations will be doing an analysis. It's not only about onboarding it, so that's the information that a taxpayer needs to know. There are other non-compliance issues that have been uh, identified and need to be addressed. And the station will walk that journey with you. They may have to raise an assessment. You may have to pay taxes before you are removing, removed from the special table. So one case might not apply to everyone. Mm. Another person might just be because he didn't onboard e teams, in which case it's very quick. But then for some, there's a bit of a check that needs to be done. Okay. So what I would advise these taxpayers is to follow up with their stations and uh, to address the issues that have been raised so that they can be removed. Mm. Is this deadline? What is the deadline? Deadline, yeah. Deadline is six days to come. Um, so it's it's uh, 31st March. What? And uh, so what happens beyond the deadline? No, I, I would actually like to say that we still have six days. Mm. Uh, they just on board. Uh, you'll find <laughs> most of the solutions that we have, even USSD. I don't know, you said you used it. How long did you navigate through it? Have you used it? There was a quick one. Yeah, uh, just, just on board. Just take two minutes on board. We'll talk about invoicing later. Mm. So first of all, get into the system. Yeah, just get, yeah, let's not talk about uh, then what. Uh, the law as as it is yeah what does the law say it did not have provision for extension mm -hmm. so even the 31st march was was uh, i think a, like a grace period so to speak because we realized many taxpayers are not on board so basically what you're saying is from the 1st of april all my invoices should be items yes right mm -hmm. yeah i should generate all my invoices on items mm. Uh, if I want to make a claim of, you know, some expenses at the end of the year, they must be supported yeah. by ETIM's invoices. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. And if I don't have, then that is not an expense. Yes, it's not a valid expense. Okay. If somebody would like to ask more questions about this, what do they do? We still have... Um First of all, I would encourage all taxpayers. Well, 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 the issue that is coming up very frequently is that uh, they, they, they don't have access to information. Mm. We've allowed that, we've availed information on the website. We are conducting as many taxpayer education sessions as possible. When you see the notices, please hop on board. Hop on board because every week, even as we speak right now, there are some sessions going on. Please hop in so that you can be able to interact with the care officers. It doesn't matter whether you're in Nairobi or you are across the country those sessions are going on mm. so don't ignore just come on board so that you can have uh, the information that you require to on board but then you can reach out to your nearest tax service office mm. uh, in case you you need to to consult one-on-one -on -one and mm. you should get the assistance that you need uh, otherwise the main e-teams office is on jk watch towers uh, kenyatta avenue if you are nearby there you can also walk in eighth floor and Hakamba Wangwe, thank you very much for joining us. Hakamba is the chief manager in charge of E-Teams at the Kenya Revenue Authority. We've had two hours of dedication to have this conversation because there's been huge public outcry, people reaching out to us and saying, bring those people. She's come. She's explained. Thank you for tuning in. Have a lovely day. It's 10 a.m.